on it. Need I say more? You want focus? You want good sleep? You want good mood? You want good digestive health? Dude, I'm want sick of us always telling people to get on it. If we have to convince you to buy on it, I'm going to punch in your suck Especially hole. now, though. They got stuff for your immune system. Shroom Tech Immune. Literally proven to work. Brian, do I, do I do tech. anything without Alpha Brain? No. I'm not basing no. an addict at this you are, you are a guy who takes... You've been taking on it as long as I've known you. Forever. And, and uh, you know, for me, I've always used their product. I've used... They're, they're, I'm, I'm telling you, their total gut health cured my fucking nausea I had after I had food poisoning for a, a month. You really had horrible I couldn't get diarrhea? Rid of it. No, I didn't have that. Yeah, you did. Fuck off. Okay. But that shit really works. They're total hemp. They're 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 incredible krill oil. I they're swear by their pro nutrients. They got freaking total gut health, like Brian said. New mood, alpha brain, alpha brain, instant put in your water bottle. You need fitness. All right. What do you need? Steel clubs, steel maces, quad mace, kettlebells, sandbags. You want to work out at home on demand training on it six barbell, body weight, kettlebell, steel mace, durability. They got streaming fitness for your thick ass. All right. Go to onit.com fighter slash fighter onit.com slash fighter for 10% off the whole goddamn website. Fuck yeah, coffee, black rifle, on it, got together, toss some caffeine uh, crystals in there. You're going to be jacked to the gills on caffeine. Fuck yeah, coffee, black rifle, on it, best coffee ever, onit.com slash fighter, 10% off. There it is. It's Wanker Wednesday. Wanker Wednesday, buddy. Wanker Wednesday. What are you doing, dude? Well, I well, spent- not, obviously not. Ironing your shirt. No, no, no. I, I couldn't. I spent uh, all morning crying. I did that. I spent all morning crying. Why? Because your eyes didn't go. No, up? no. Because um, your hair? because I watched the end of Outcry. Oh, you but you finally five got five episodes. It 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 it'll, it'll get to it'll you. Yank on your heart. And 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 the most embarrassing thing. Am is I right my, about it? You're right about it. My girl's on me, and I'm crying like this. And she goes, "Oh, my sensitive boy, you want a Kleenex?" I go, "I'm not crying." And she goes, hey, "Brian." I can feel your fucking tears landing on my shoulder. <laughs> You're crying on your girl's shoulder. That's how hard I was crying Why, because but, hold, let me ask you when he got off. When he got off, I was like, "Oh, when he when he was telling me he's like, you it know, just so it was six years that motherfucker had. How to down live. was his girl? Six years. How down was his girl? She's a badass. Time. His girl, her family, they're they're amazing. Great, they're family, fucking amazing right? people. And his yeah. family. Oh. but isn't it crazy? Like when you're first watching it. When they the four year old does his interview, not the second one. The second one's completely full of shit. But the first one, you're like. Man, this motherfucker might have done it because well, you kind of go down this weird road. Children, children, people that's, that that do this. Children, when you ask them a question and you come back and ask the same question, they have trouble. Um, Four year olds have trouble between reality and perce perception or or what you put in their brain. Yep. So they've stood. They've done those studies. They showed it on the. They showed it. On they showed there. it where children will make up what happened to them even though they have it on video but bait off the interviewer <clears throat> too like if yes. the interview is going now did they touch your vagina and they go no right they go, are you sure he didn't you come back you a week there? later and they yep. said yes so so now i haven't had a sip of whiskey and i don't know how long i'm gonna have, have a, sip a little now. sip and i might have one now, too I'm, and i'm gonna do it for our boy who on outcry his name his name is a uh, uh greg greg kelly kelly <laughs> Because I uh, forgot. What a looker! What a looker! Good looking dude. So, you know what? Six years later, started to lose his hair. Father time. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. But, but what, he's what, grown it out. What you what you saw the I, by the second episode, I saw the fucking other kid in there, and I went, "They look so much alike." Dude, Did nobody put well, this can, together? Well, that's what they're saying is the the audacity of the prosecution team that doesn't or the how about how about how about the law enforcement there? Did he even? interview anybody in the house didn't ask the kids to pick out of a lineup they just said greg and they i think even what happens, they look similar i think what happens is you're a detective bad people though no, well or you're or you're a detective <clears throat> and you go this ki these children were molested and you say and and you you hear the child say the guy's name so what happens is in your mind through your experience your emotion you might say I have to get this guy convicted. But that's not the way it works. I know it's not. Then but how I'm just does then, but, but human beings are get very I emotional. can't have that. No, you're not getting off that. <clears throat> There's no way that detective right. gets off that easy because you have another gentleman living in the house. Oh, it's crazy. And I mean, you it's don't crazy. even. And he looks like him. You don't interview him, and then you don't even do a a, a visual. Terrible job. Going to hate is this Greg? Ke is this the Greg Kelly? Yeah. And I bet the kid would be like uh, maybe. He, you show him the other guy. Is this Greg Kelly? Kid right? Like, yeah. He made up his mind. Which is insane. He made up his mind. Which is insane. Yeah. He, and, and and his lawyer was, you know, I mean. Oh, they were all in on it. Wow. The lawyer, everyone you know was in what? on it. Justice system worked. Six years later, 
the justice well, it didn't system work, work because he was he lost three years of his life I in mean, prison, I mean, and then fuck. you're talking about three years fighting it, so six years total. Crazy. When he when he how saw, frustrating is it? Uh, we just gave away the series. Sorry, guys, but you know, um, it was very cathartic. <clears throat> well, if I if I tell you about uh, a documentary or a show and you don't watch it by the, a day or two, we're gonna spoil. We have it. to talk. That's about what it. we do. We yeah. we gotta talk about. Gotta it. talk about it. Isn't it amazing? I'm trying to get him on Fire the Kid. I'd love to get him on. He worked at it on it in in uh, Austin. Yeah, he wants to walk on to he's University of Texas uh, Austin. Now he looks like he's a very strong kid and very athletic. We had a full ride to University of Texas San Antonio. He had a full ride to Rice. So he must so have been, he, he must be something else. But what he must what have been is a stud. What's your take on that after all well, he, this time? He hasn't played in six years. Hard. He hasn't played football in six years. Very hard, very hard. But I, there's, some, there's something to be said because, you know, my my quarterback in college, um, Joel Klatt, he was 26, 27 years old because he went from playing high school football. Then he played professional baseball. He was like Jeez, double A. fucking athlete. Yeah, so he played baseball, but so he didn't play for a number of years and when you're older more mature it's such an advantage oh yeah like even you know how it is like it well your son's not into sports but if he was like if it from from third grade to fifth grade huge oh huge, huge. huge. so if you can you know if, if you want your son to play sports if you can hold him back mm. so he's a lot matures, of parents do especially they, these days they do that with hockey they yeah. Do that, yeah sandbagging <clears throat> but but uh, just to they say call it? you know call it sandbagging sandbagging but for joel Klatt, he was you know 27 we were trying to, you know, uh, hook up with girls and party after games while he was studying game film. He was film. 27 years 27. old? Oh, that's... 26 that's or 27. That's a, Chris Winky, who won yeah. the Heisman, same thing. Look at that, that tiny, handsome devil. Look at that tiny mask. Mike Catherwood looking like the picture of fucking looking hell. Looking good, brother. Looking Gentlemen, like the Thanks for answering the bell. And lady. Brian, there's never a bad time to save money, buddy. Especially on home insurance. Dude, now more home. than ever. More re-shopping, than ever. Yep, re-shopping your home insurance rates with Policy Genius could save you a good chunk of change. And the best part is you barely need to lift a finger to do it. Here's how it goes. You first head to policygenius.com, answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. Then Policy Genius will compare your policy against options from top insurers to make sure you're getting the right home insurance coverage at the best possible price. And if Policy Genius finds you a better rate than what you're currently paying, they'll do all the work wow. to get you switched. Let me get you own a car too, dude? Yeah. Policy Genius will compare your home and auto policies across different insurers and even mix and match mm-hmm. to find you savings. They've saved their customers an average of $1,000 and $1,127. 100, wow, I thought just 1000 yep, Nope. Year. So if you'd like to put a little cash back in your pocket right now, see how much you can save by reshopping your home insurance rates at policygenius.com. Now, you want to smell good. But I don't want like aluminum. I don't want all the and, toxins. And you don't, don't want to smell like a bunch of like, you know, perfume. No, okay? I don't smell homeless either. My native deodorant, it doesn't just block odor better. It's made better. It has ingredients you've heard of like coconut oil, shea butter, tapioca starch. It's vegan, never tested on animals. Oh, thank God. I hate when they test on people. Well, aluminum forms a plug in your sweat glands to keep you from sweating. That's what I'm that's, saying, dude. Yep. That's why Native never uses ingredients like aluminum, parabens, sulfates. And aluminum-free deodorant doesn't mean you have to sacrifice on o- odor protection. Native will keep you smelling and feeling fresh all day long. Over 10 cents, too. 10 Jeez, oh, man. Yeah. Got lavender, rose, cucumber, mint, citrus, and herbal. My favorite's the mint. I got to be honest. I, like I love citrus. the mint. Native is risk-free to try. Even products come with free shipping within the U.S. of A, plus free 30-day returns and exchanges. See why so many people love Native and check out the over 14,000 five-star reviews. 14, Do what 000? we did and make the switch to Native today by going to Native. D-O, that's D-E-O, native D-E-O dot com slash T-Fat-K, or use the promo code T-Fat-K at checkout. Get 20% off your first order. That's native D-E-O dot com slash T-Fat-K, or use promo code T-Fat-K at checkout for 20% off your first order. Good to have you back, man. Oh, dude. It's great to be here. I mean, look at Looking just, shaved, dude. Just thick and Mexican and shiny and beautiful. I did, yeah. Congratulations. Who cuts your hair? Um, the uh, s- standards and supply, standard and supply, I think, in Venice, California. Okay, it's a uh, you don't like have to say California, but. hippie barber shop, you know, kind of like Guy it's or- a barber shop, but it's like yeah, I fashiony yeah. barber yeah, shop, yeah. you know. We're talking about outcry. Did you see it? The documentary no. on Showtime. No. Oh, dude, it's unbelievable. You, is you is that it. the one where the guy got falsely accused of? Uh, yeah, yes. like in like when they 
when they first told me about it, I'm like, all right, I'll check it out. Then I had nothing to do, yeah. and I watched it. I'm like, holy It'll shit. It'll keep you up. It, I, uh, I have a weird insane. thing where I love anything fiction has to be horrible and dark and terrible and about murder and dis, dis, the disgust and the depravity of humankind. But anything uh, nonfiction, non-fiction? I, 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 I get really bummed out. Like, it yeah, really yeah. affects me if it I watch. It does scare you. Yeah. And it bums so, you see, out. See, all I can watch and read is nonfiction. I will yeah. not watch anything or read. I would definitely not read a book on fiction. All I do is read fiction now. Well, I read novels now. You're gay, man. Because right. I went through so many years of not. I agree. I yeah, find oh, so yeah, much history, value. Yeah. yeah. I find a lot of value in uh, fiction because it makes you more creative. It makes me. Ooh, not me. I love all nonfiction. Learn from the past. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna make you a little list of uh, some really good books. I don't have time. You'll I have get lost seven in books them. on Pablo Escobar. No, no, I love it, but you'll get. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I can't get enough of it. You'll get lost in some books because they're just as true as nonfiction. If nope. that makes sense. If it didn't happen, my brain goes. Nah. No, no, it, it did happen though in a way. So, so sometimes like, what's funny about metaphor and story is that it's just as true. I know this sounds weird, but, but I'm making an argument for it. But I can just read nonfiction, which actually happened. There's, but you got to remember, yeah. I, I don't have the history background of me. So for me, yeah, World I love War that you're II doing and Vietnam and Nixon yeah. and JFK, all it. that stuff, I missed no, all that. No, but what, what, what he's getting football. at is very true in that, um, like, like, like Don Quixote, for example. Mm. It's completely made up. But as you're reading it, you're like, this has happened yeah. 70,000 yes. times There's in, about in a man, real life. Yeah. About a man who is essentially a walking anachronism, a man who is still trying to live the old way in a modern world. Right, yeah. And so it's very... But I, I totally hear you because right now for you, what I think is very interesting about your transition, which, which I really appreciate and also speaks to your intelligence, is that you didn't grow up you grew up majoring in sports. And what happened was, as you're older, the world has started to affect you. COVID, um, all this stuff, uh, all, all, all these Do social some. changes. And yeah. what's happening is, you are starting to see that politics and the philosophy they're in and all that is really affecting your life. And in some ways, a negative way, and you don't have recourse. So what you're doing, which is what, what I've said before, is that when you feel like you don't have ammunition, you need ammunition. Yeah, ammunition. And knowledge is ammunition. Educate yourself. Educate yourself. But and also, you're reading, you're reading yeah. history, you're reading where the stuff comes from. So now you have an interest in it. Isn't it funny though? It started from you though, hanging out with I you. I hope so, I appreciate but it. But then also, like we think right now is like such a terrible time and it, it's, you know, everything's so polarized and Trump's the worst. Like we've gone through this. How about Nixon? Yes, Absolutely. Have. How about Nixon? My father said that. My father's 80. My father People hate said, JFK. My dad said, none of this is new. He goes, yeah. one of the things when you're 80 is you realize that this is your regular. This is the American story. Mm. Black Lives Matter. George Floyd, uh, protests, uh, COVID, a little bit different, but but it, this is the American story. Yeah. All of this stuff, all these changes. And and uh, every single generation, it, 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 there's nothing negative about it. It's just reality. It's kind of the human existence. It's, I, I think the human experience, especially for Americans, is that we all think our time is yeah. the great disaster. Yeah. It's our time's the like this is we're really fucked now. It I mean, feels like every one of our parents and every one of our grandparents <laughs> and every one of our great grandparents. You know, however far far back you go in this country. All of them said, well, the country I knew has gone to pot. We're yep. fucked. That's right. This is it. Everybody this says is that. it. We're, what are, what are our kids going to, what world are our kids going to grow up in? Older generation know. always says that about the younger generation. Oh, every this, time. The younger generation doesn't know we're hard work. And, yeah, they do. You know what's funny? I made my girl watch Philadelphia. The other it was on, oh boy. and it just started. I went, "You haven't seen Philadelphia?" She goes, like, "We have Denzel watching Tom Hanks." Yeah. I go, "The AIDS pandemic." I didn't know you Denzel think, was in that. Oh, he's the lawyer. He's oh, fantastic. He's so good. he's so yeah. good at it. And I go, "You, are you, you're worried about COVID? Do you know AIDS in the eighties? That's, my, that's the, me. I know. I, I, I remember. I started using that. some of your clothes, Oof. and she goes, "We're the same age. What the fuck do you know about AIDS?" Yeah. I was like, from Philadelphia, from Dude. Brian. Like, it was a real problem. It was, I, it was I, lived worse. That, I lived that in New York, and yeah. I saw it with my own eyes. I watched men waste away, and it was some of the worst stuff I've ever seen. Dude, if you, Next time you guys have Drew on, you got to like, carve out time specifically to talk about that because I think, I think New York City and, and obviously San Francisco had just a, a completely different level of it. But in, in, in L.A., Drew, Dr. Drew Pinsky was at the very forefront, yes. along with Dr. Fauci, by yeah. the way, yeah. um, with yeah. the what, what they called at the time GRIDS, yeah. um, gay-related immune disorder, mm -hmm. I believe, mm -hmm. uh, um, and which turned out to be HIV AIDS. It was so disgusting, so beyond what you can even imagine. The way and, people um, died. I mean, I, th that's the thing. Dude, that a death so many were right? dying, oh, but, but dude, not you, so you many get, were dying like falling over. over. Your face. You're watching someone, a human, 
go from perfectly healthy, beautiful person to just deteriorate and uh, like, like it looked like a zombie. My next door neighbor. How many people died from AIDS in the in the nine? It, let's say. Well, well, when was like the hotbed of so so the, late so, 80s, so yeah. many gay men the Ty entire eighty nine the entire gay community the entire artistic community the theater world in New York the dance community in New York was so devastated I'm telling you everybody died butt and, sex really uh, it was it was Booty nuts sex. everybody who was uh, a fashion the fashion world the dance world the theater world was absolutely decimated um, I mean like beyond what you can imagine but I my next door neighbor my neighbor Eric wonderful guy. Um, he it started to affect his brain, and he oh. came out, and I never forgot. He had tubes in his nose, and he said, "Do you want a dog? Do you want a dog? I'll give you my dog. Do you want a dog? She's making me nuts. I mean, I love her, but..." And he was going crazy. Yeah. And me and my girlfriend were like, "Oh, yeah. it's there. You go. It's, not not a lot of people are living with it though. Like I remember Magic Johnson when he got it. My brother started crying. Yeah, he loved Magic Johnson." But he was fine, isn't he? Like well, now, now they have medication. Protease with H, inhibitors. With your HIV positive, you can just It's living. actually a, a problem, too. I mean, obviously, it's not a problem because people are living. But it is a problem to a lot of my older gay friends. They're like, these party and play kids, now they know AIDS is in a death sentence. And it's almost like a feather in their cap. They're well, like, fucking raw dog every day. Let's do it. Doesn't matter. I get AIDS. Fuck it. Not know? only that, you know what? The AIDS has had to compromise itself so often. As a, as a virus that you can now get it and they think you can stay off medication. Oh, wow. It nice. kind of incubates forever because it's a great weaker. Thing. Yeah. But dude, I remember it so well. I got many AIDS tests because before we thought it was a straight disease. I mean, at the height, you know, yeah, 41,000 and 90 shit. The height was 41,000 died in 90. The difference 95. was, Brennan, mm -hmm. is that when you got AIDS, it, it was, was a death sentence. Well. And you, and you, you got to remember that 41,000 was out of, <clears throat> excuse me, was out of a very small most of it 99 percent of it was in a small community yes. so it seemed like every gay person it just every per gay person you knew was well so either dead or going and, to and die so what you know? happened it was scared of it but so what happened crazy. was what happened was because it was primarily a gay disease and an intravenous drug using disease the media considered that prejudicial oh for sure so there was a lot of pressure on CBS and ABC and these different companies and there's a book about it called I think it's called the news about the news can't remember I read it but uh, and, and and there was a lot of I'm sorry if that's not the book but there was a lot of pressure on these on the networks to find straight people who had AIDS mm. so what happened was they would do these stories on a straight gal from Orange County with blonde hair who had yeah. it or they or some guy but the truth was the truth was it was almost specifically a gay disease and, and men who are taking it, not men who are who are giving it, yep. not men who are not tops, but bottoms. The bottoms because they were getting it. They were getting pushed into their. System. I'll tell you firsthand. Yeah. The anal yeah. tissue very soft. It's <laughs> uh, uh, you know. Yeah, was, wasn't it careful. big in Africa too? AIDS. Was so, so that's so the Africa, reason right? it was a heterosexual disease in Africa, and they couldn't figure out why, was because Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, didn't suffer from the plague, from the from the bubonic plague. Mm. And if you suffered, from, if if you all of us who have who are of European uh, descent have a have a variant in our gene that makes us resistant to the bubonic plague to ex to an extent, which also makes you resistant to AIDS. Interesting, nice. and that's why it was a fucking head. They couldn't figure out why in certain parts of Southeast Asia and especially in Africa, it was a heterosexual disease where men and women were getting it all the time, but it was slim to vanishing in this heterosexual. Uh, European population. I saw I saw some lady on the news. She she was like 109. She had the plague. She had the Spanish flu, <gasps> and she got COVID. Holy and fuck. survived all of them. Woo! That we need Damn. to extract I mean, don't her. Wrong, she looked like death, yeah. right? But she survived but all three. Extract her DNA <laughs> and just provide it to everyone right? so that she gets. My I, grandma got it. My grandma's 94. She got it in an old folks home where five people, five other old folks have died, and she just COVID or AIDS. COVID. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no. So they say you never. <laughs> and she did ninety four. She got it. Uh, she tested negative, and we're like, oh fuck. Because like I said, all the five other senior citizens in her in her home had passed. So I was like, man, we gotta start preparing for. Yeah, grandma. I think well, old folks don't want to get make up eighty percent of the deaths. She passed. She she totally went right through her, and she's fine. And it never Shout even like negatively grandma. affected you her. Don't you don't want to get I, intubated. I, no, I would okay. love to have Doctor Drew on now. That how much we know and the mm -hmm. stats we know about COVID now. I'd love to get him back in. Get him both back, both of you guys. He'd love to be here. But, yeah, well, well, but, but, but I don't understand why the science isn't diffusing into the brains 
of mothers who are still saying, I want to keep my kids out of school. I, 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 I look, we had it. Yeah. And I, I stay, I stick by what I said, which is I am still against the shutdown, the blanket shutdown. Have you had it, Mike? No. Pussy. And, 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 I, yeah. and that's my point of view and that's my opinion. And one can argue with it. When people say I follow the science. Yeah. Well, I can follow the science. And so I, I just, I don't get it. Here's the, in my opinion, the big problem is, is that you just said something that a lot of people may disagree with, but was very measured and very, yeah. I think, logical. You're not saying, uh, it's against my fucking rights. I'm no. not wearing a mask. Fuck you. No, no, no. You're I, just saying like, look, there is a lot of science showing that it, it is overwhelmingly only affecting a very limited group of the population. The, the, the old and the uh, people who have pre- pre-existing where, where, it's de- where it's deadly right yeah. and um and even that's is, falling is, even that's falling is the most reasonable thing to do because of knowing a- acknowledging that it's only affecting this amount of people is is the most reasonable thing to do to shut down the entire economy to to prevent kids from going to school and socializing um there could be a lot more negative side effects in comparison to just the virus in and of itself by just saying that there's this weird People have this this strange yeah. kind of almost like it's you're 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 committing this dog whistle yes. where you're saying f science f and it's like no 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 wait I, I'm, I'm I'm on both like I, I get both yeah. by, 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 by the way what, what I don't understand is why not report the good and the bad why yeah. not report the the death the, the decline of deaths like why not report why the good they? they never do because well, I, I I mean it, it's we know. CNN versus Fox like it's political now I think most of this is going to go away when the election starts in November. I, well, I think a lot of it will too, but we yes. well, look. We've talked the, about the, this. The Democrats are doing their best to, we've, to you know, it's it's a, it's a Trump disease. Look how bad he's look how bad he's handled Corona. Look at look yeah. at the economy. Look, yeah. kids aren't back in school. If he would have handled it better, so it's so political. I think in November when the election comes by, you know, Cause, and because they look notice they 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 stopped talking about Florida. Really, New York's better. You know, they're not talking about Sweden. What happened in Atlanta with Georgia? All this, so they've they're running out of states to talk about. What happened in Arizona? Remember the cases. What about the hospital? So they're running out of things to 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 go attack these days. The president also, I think, in many ways, made his own bet on this one because I am not uh, a, a, a Donald Trump supporter. I'm not an apologist, but I'm I'm I consider myself a pretty objective guy, and mm-hmm. and I I think that there's so much negative feeling and vitriol towards the president that people are just perfectly capable perfectly capable of relaxing their view on logic in order to just continue to gather bad evidence towards he, the president. He's an because, emotional, he's a polarizing and, and And that's that's his fault. He yeah. can't deny that. He's Regardless such of, a polarizing, you know. Well, 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 yeah, well yesterday when, they t- when they're, it's, they're giving Corona updates and Fauci's not there because he doesn't agree with Fauci. Which, I don't agree with Fauci either, but he's done some good work. But uh, And then he, he talks about that lady who clearly a sex trafficker for Epstein, and he goes, I, I wish her well. Giselle, like, Giselle Maxwell? Yeah, it's like, what the fuck? Are you, what do you mean you wish her well? What are you talking about, he, he, dude? I think his problem, and this is speculation, but he's a man of science. He's a doctor. Yeah. He is not skilled in in the the world of, like, public oration. Wait, and, who's, and, who's, you're talking who's, about Fauci? Dr. Fauci. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is so, that Fauci said I wish her no, well? No, Trump did. Oh, Trump did. <laughs> and and he so Dr. Fauci, Fauci he's like, dude, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a numbers guy. I'm a... I'm a, I'm a uh, a binary person and now i'm getting in front of a microphone now he's famous tens of millions of people at every moment are listening every and then hundreds of millions subsequently you know in in retrospect and he's probably everything that comes out of his mouth he's like ah, 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 you know yeah, but, but fauci but th- here's the thing about fauci my only my only thing about fauci is that he's a very cautious man yeah he's an incredibly cautious man which is his nature which you would be he, as a disease you can't have a guy you can't have him you can't have him driving all policy. No, no. you just can't. And, and well, look, I, you guys remember when you worked when TFATK was was a, a, a corporate entity, right? Yes. You had a, you had a you had an umbrella to answer to that was collecting paychecks off of the work you do. Yeah, they have their attorneys, and their job is to look out for the best interests of them and making money and the bottom line from a legal standpoint. Right. And we obviously, we used to have the same in radio. You, you had to run everything by these corporate guys and these attorneys because they're like, that'll probably get you in trouble. I know. And, and Kevin and Bean used to bring me aside after, and, I, and when they'd shoot down some bit that I thought was like pretty innocuous. And they're like, you gotta understand. What's the upside for them and their job? Correct. And their job, what's the upside 
for kind of fudging and letting something fly. Yeah. Very little. What's the upside for just playing it safe all the time? It's huge. And I got to see not- if you're a, a public health official and your job is the overall safety from a from a medical standpoint of the country economics socialization uh uh, uh, uh growth of, of the of the gdp all that fucking aside you're just your number one goal your prime directive is keeping everybody safe what's the upside on being like let's see how far Lucy we can push this. yeah, yeah no. no he's gonna be pretty reserved you know, and, I, and i'm not trying to make excuses for the guy because i'm definitely in line with you where i'm like Man, there's been a lot of mistakes that have made that have cost people. People are destitute. People are broke. People are are so depressed. The suicide rate is in, is increasing exponentially. Yeah, I've thought about so it. So I'm I'm with you guys, but at the same time, I'm also trying to put myself in his shoes. He, he, that's his bread yeah. and butter. I, is I just agree. playing it safe. I agree. You know? Just as Americans, you have to look at all the data and fucking you live hope. your life. Yeah. How you? How old your kid, Mike? Six. So she, but is she going to any schooling or anything? She, we, we, she was at LA Unified Public Schools last year in kindergarten. And just this year, prior to COVID or anything, we decided to take her out and put her in um, a, a private school because, Smart. daddy. Makes um, well, she, and she's, she's, she's a weirdo. My kid's a weirdo. And I grew up and You're I was kind of weirdo. Uh, not like, like off on her own, talk in the corner. Or no, like no. Just like she, demons. she loves her own Long outfits counter. and has no, she doesn't care what other kids are wearing. She wears these fucked up like Ace Ventura She's when he goes individual. to the mental hospital She's an individual. outfits. Oh, that's cool. And she she likes to create this insane artwork where She's an I, artist. Right. And and a, a good weird. She's a weirder. She's not a and She's she, wonderfully odd. But but is she an introvert? Uh when she she, have any, like, When buddies? she's not around like friends and family yeah she's really introverted when she's with us she's you can't shut her up i bet and i see so much of my daughter in in me and i went to public schools la unified my whole life i had 60 some kids in my class every class it was just massive schools and i know that for someone like me there was a big one of the big reasons i was such a bad student is because i was a shitty student another reason was because like i needed special attention so my wife and i had this conversation we're like we should get her in some place that's a little more open-minded, blah, blah, blah. So we put her in this private school. COVID hits. LA public schools are like, you're not going back to school. We might do some Zoom shit, figure it out. But this public private school is trying so hard to kind of toe the line. They're trying the best they can to say, you're gonna, your kid's going to go to school in September. It's going to happen. But every week we get a fucking new... Well, Newsom news, came out because, yeah, my, my kids are in private school and they... You know, the private school was allowed to get away with it, and yeah. then Newsom realized that was going on, and he shut down that. It's it, so and private so private schools are not allowed to be open it, as of right now. No, it, because if they're in the if they're in one of those hot zones yes. in California, and LA County is one of them, but they keep sending you, us these email. We have five weeks. We have four know, weeks. There's still so much we can do. So, but you turned out fine. You went to public school. I did, but it was only by the grace yeah, of God. Horrible drug issue, but I, I and also I I honestly like. I don't know how it is now, but in in big public schools, there was a time and a place. You know, when I was in high school uh, and grade school, like there was a there was a, an understood thing. Like smart kids who are are on it, go ahead, pay attention. You shithead, just keep your mouth shut. We'll, we'll pass you. Yeah. Just stay out of my fucking way. And that yeah. was like they looked yeah. at me as a number. Don't fuck like, this up. Don't fuck this up for the kids. Who, and I and I very early on got this impression that's like. Okay, I'm that kid, and going to college and doing white collar work is not for me. So just fucking do your best, kill your time, and then hope to God that you can become a fireman or or uh, get some like a good union construction gig. I had the worst education because I was moved all the time. Yeah. So I just had blinding gas. I never forget my father. I wrote a letter. I wrote a like a thank you letter or something, and my father proofread it. I was 15, and he looked up at me and he said. Are you aware that he, oh, no. he he just the way you do it? He goes, "Are you aware that a sentence ends in a period?" I know. <laughs> I've That's how fucking idiotic no, I've I was. Been there, yeah, I did the uh, same thing. I run the sorry. computer and I had my dad proofreading. He goes, "I'm ready to read." He goes, "Your dad would be the same." I, I can just see him. He keeps going like this, and he looks at me. He goes, "This is terrible." I was like, "Um, I was like eight. I was like, "All right, dude. Well, fuck. Sorry, man. Public school, dude." I was reading aloud, and I was going like this. I was going. Uh, the ski was uh, blue and he goes read it again I go the ski was blue and he goes read it again 
I go, the ski is blue. He goes, the sky, <laughs> the sky. God damn it. He's pulling his hair out. Cause I was, this is such how a old were you idiot. Though? Were you like uh, 30? 30? I was like 30. Oh, 20, yeah. 27. <laughs> 27. <laughs> Fucking I'll tell you what's interesting though, is like, you know, my, when your kids go to school and you're, you're driving them and you know, that takes time and yeah. then, you know, they're at school and they get home around four you know, now being home around my kids so much, it's like I get why if you could come up with a <laughs> like a curriculum where they could learn at the homeschooling, if you if you have the freedom like we do with our jobs to be around more, you get more time with them. I can see the benefits of homeschooling. There's there's huge benefits because you you can keep your eye on your kid, and then also um, there's always concern, even if you're not some super conspiracy theory. Um, you know, right wing asshole. There, I, I think that there's obviously going to be concerned that like ethical and moral ideas are going to be injected in your kid that you, you don't think you yeah. don't really fuck. Dive. Well, especially so, the way schools are going right with. now. Right, yeah. exactly. And, I, and, and, and and far that's, left ideology. That's, that's totally fair. I think that's totally yeah, fair. Like far left ideology. But, if you want to fire Brian Callen up, bring it fucking, on. Fucking don't teach my Get my em. kids your fucking activist. Get far left idea of what you think truth is yeah. go fuck yourself fuck reading you. writing arithmetic sports art uh -huh. keep your politics out of my fucking of kids yeah. i'm gonna lose columbus, my fucking mind i know mind. dude believe columbus me. did yeah. discover america okay? believe me i'm gonna come I'm, I'm gonna come after him the um i don't have any problem with that i don't have any problem with, with taking on <laughs> uh, certain like i don't have problems with taking on the idea of columbus well, i learned that that columbus used some pretty nasty shit to get no, they you don't know, say any of that. I learned it in school. You, I did too. We, yeah. They taught that? Well, where he gave the Native uh, Americans yeah, the blankets? Smallpox blankets? Sure, yeah. I learned that. You, no. I sure Trans did. That's not in the textbooks. Stuff. Well, you know what, though? I, That's well, not in the textbooks. I learned, that actually, I learned that actually in high school. I didn't learn that. Not, not in middle school. Not in middle I think school. I'm with you on that, though. Yeah. But, I mean, look, uh, look, if you want to talk about I'd be very happy for my children to be exposed to the question, should a Confederate flag be flying over the capital of North Car South Carolina and Mississippi yeah. or Tennessee? Are you, I mean, because that does stand for slavery. That's yeah. what that was. Should a, a statue of Robert E. Lee actually be standing when he was fighting on the side of a pro-slavery army? I get I, I, I think that's a very valuable discussion to have, and I, I, have, I have no attachment to the Confederate flag personally and, and, a, and a statue of Robert E. Lee. My, con my concern with that, though, too, With homeschooling? With any type of, like, with any type of, where you're trying to indoctrinate moral and ethical ideas right. on someone, uh, whether it's at school, whether it's in the home, or anything, I honestly think that, that it's, that's not how it works. My point being is like, have you guys uh, either read or, or seen Clockwork Orange, right? I just okay. read the book. Okay. I just finished the book. So yesterday, the whole point of the the movie so and the book was was this one idea, and I think so many people kind of see it as something else. And and for what I saw it was was that they they take this kid who is admittedly very ultra violent. As he, you know, he's a sociopath, and then they take a government protocol where they they try to hammer in ethical and moral ideas. Well, they but do it with. Science, right? With what they look at as a, a system. They, a give systemic. Him a, they give him a drug and then LSD? they force him to watch. They give him a drug. They shoot him up with a drug. The book is fantastic, but the movie's a masterpiece. What they did with language is probably second it's to none. It's a masterpiece. Yeah. Anthony Burgess. But they, they what shoot drug, him up. LSD? So they take, they take him. He's a young, he's a droogie. And he uh, has his three droogs, uh, Dim, Peter, and Georgie. And his name is Alex. And they're from, uh, he's got this Ma Manchester accent. And they go about and they well, the rape and they kill and they maim. And his favorite thing is for the entertainment. Old, the old ultra violence, yeah. he calls it. Yeah. Where they, and there are rape scenes in that movie. That movie's so shocking. And, 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 and Still, is he doing the, that stuff went before they give him the drugs? So, so yeah, yeah, so he's, he's, he's a, a so bad, he's, bad he's, man. A, he's a young, okay. he's a young droogie and he gets off on violence. He's so clearly a sociopath, mm -hmm. a sadistic sociopath. He gets off on destroying human beings, which he talks about. He gets arrested for killing an old woman. Uh, he then is put into the system. And two years into his prison sentence, they say, we have a cure. Well, this sounds like Charles Manson's story. Yeah. So they have him strapped to a chair and they shoot him up with a, with a medicine. They prop his eyes open. In the movie, they have his eyes open like that. Yeah, I remember that scene. And it's they horrifying. force him to watch violent movies. And he starts to get sick. When he used to be turned on, he gets sick. He starts to throw up. And so violence, rape, all these things now, even the thought of it make him wretch so this the the government has cured him but what the, the the theme of the book and the theme of the movie is now you've taken away choice you've taken away moral choice you've just made it 
impossible for him to do good bad things because he'll get sick but good. you haven't you haven't changed the guy right? you haven't changed him and the truly. argument the argument is and of course in the end in the end, in the end it doesn't really yeah in the end it doesn't really work in the end he, he starts and in the again. book in the book he actually gets old he just grows up and he goes you know i'm good. destroying isn't as good as creating and he just gets older he but in in the movie there's a Probably scene in prison it, like and I, I thought this was one of the best yes, little yes. pieces of spice that kubrick put on it there's a scene where he's in the library after this treatment. Spoiler. And he's... Uh, dude, the movie came out 50 fucking years ago. One There's of the a, greatest movies ever. A, you, you, it's, fuck you. you Spoiler. It. It's a bl it's a mind blower. Um, <laughs> it's a fucking mind blowing Spoiler. movie. There's a scene where, where Alex Alex has has gone through this program. And then, as Brian put it, he's physically been changed. But um, he's, he's, you know, now living a life. He's into studies and he's wearing the uniform, the whole thing. And he's in the school library and a priest comes up to him and he says alex how's it how's it going and he says oh i'm i'm right i'm right as rain sir and he I'm gives cured, him all the, the, the and uh the priest says okay i just want you to know he's like he's he said and he bring, brings me he said goodness comes from within mm. goodness has to come from within it's not something that can be applied to you it's a choice and and I, that's my big concern about all of this too especially in the in this world where we have like white fragility and this idea these ideas these ethical um moral commandments that are being pushed on people children and adults alike. Well, it's not enough to be a racist now you have to be anti-racist you can't be <coughs> you can't be a non-racist now you have to be anti-racist anti no silence is racist right well white and, silence is violence you hear this stuff too so the, the, these are the things i object to well that and the, my point is is that I had the incredible luxury of growing up in one of, I honestly, I'll take the Pepsi challenge with anyone. I grew up in one of the most diverse places on the fucking planet. A, a white Anglo-Saxon was by far the minority in, in, in where I grew up. And I arrived at a point where I really do feel that I am as, as, as enlightened as I can be to all separate cultures and that wasn't because of any book i read it wasn't because of any any type of uh adult figure or 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 or, or figure of authority trying to impose these ideas on me it was because i had to live amongst Spirits. people and talk to them yeah. and made mistakes and yeah. fucked up put my foot in my mouth and Obviously. clearly offended people then learned and then felt better about myself when i understood people yes. then got turned on by the idea of opening my mind to fucking different walks of life oh no shit and 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 you, you can't you can't kind of synthesize that yeah. in an intellectual but, but this capacity. Is what's this, is what's yeah, this is what's dangerous about cups. Yeah, let's thank you. This is what's dangerous about the narrative. The da the danger about the narrative when you talk about white supremacy, which really means this was a country that was founded by a white majority. So the culture is skewed toward that, mm -hmm. right? So so when you say white supremacy, you're talking about white majority. This is kind of how cultures work and then we work within that. Obviously, white people suppressed Native Americans specifically and black people obviously and that has to be contended with and we Anyone know that who wasn't. but anytime you start pitting groups against each other watch what happens is you're saying the groups at the top are culpable yeah, yeah. and the groups at the bottom are victims okay if you're going to do that now what you're going to do is you're going to say this you're not talking about whites well now now what about the asians yeah. the asians are crushing it in every aspect what about economically jews? and what about and jews, the jews right? and the jews so and we know how that works out we know exactly how that works out so that you're gonna have asians you're gonna have jews then you're gonna have whites then you're gonna have you know latinos and and if you're gonna create trenches a tranche yeah. tranche a tranche system like cool that a cast day. system <laughs> you better yeah, be fucking careful sober. yes yes no of course i, of course. Pour you a cup and <laughs> I, I honestly i i really do appreciate you even asking but yeah no i i yeah it just hit me i'll, I'll take like, a tiny bit okay. much less than that buddy okay that's it the dashiest dash okay dashiest okay. dash okay man Dash is dash. That's a, no, it's very considerate of you to even ask though. Uh, 20, uh, 18 years ago, it would have been, I would have been like, guys, can we wait? <laughs> but n now it's not even a, it doesn't even change my heart rate. Um, I, it, it, it's true. I mean, like, You're people solid. talk about white, white um, privilege, but it, I guess all the metrics you would measure that by, what would they be? Uh, wealth, um, you know, schooling, kind of things like that. Asians are way higher than whites in every one yeah. of them. And, they, and so, and like, where, where suffer, do we go? They didn't, they didn't suffer any short measure of discrimination. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. I, I, I feel horrible here's because I grew up the, in a really Asian it's neighborhood. It's wildly simplistic. Anytime you find one bad guy, which could be systematic racism, which could be white supremacy, that's wildly simplistic. Yeah. It's a thousand things. It, 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 nobody wants to do the work, but 
anytime there's a problem, like say in the black community, there are a lot of issues they've had to deal with. Mm. The loss of manufacturing jobs, the loss of agricultural jobs in, in the 20s, um, uh, the crack epidemic, the drug epidemic. The housing uh, all, situation. Housing all of that issue, stuff, yeah. so many redlining. There are a lot of issues that you have to take into account. And that's very important. So you, when, you, when you throw it all on one bad guy, Wildly simplistic, not going to help anybody. Going back to what you were saying, how every former, you know, grandpas and uh, grandmas and great grandmothers always think that it's the worst time. They've everyone's lived through the worst time. The only argument that we're in the worst time now is because of social media and the cancel culture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. they've never had to deal with that. You're talking about a different animal. Yeah, and that the narrative of that cancel culture, which I think a lot of it, it is white people or. It, you know, doesn't matter race, but I think a lot of it they 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 amplify everything because now we got this. You got to worry. And about they can take away your media. livelihood because they corporations can. listen. The problem is that corporations are gutless, and and sometimes they just rather cancel you and just fire you. Well, they don't want to. But deal there with is it. recourse. Gut, gutless in a way. I yes, there's recourse. I, it sucks when someone gets fired for something that isn't even actionable, uh, just because it looks bad for a corporation. But at the same time. Again, let's try and put ourselves in their shoes. If you support Who's shoes, if, uh, it's some corporation that okay. that fires someone or, or or does something for the sake of guarding their reputation, like CBS and sure. Canon, and na- you name it. Yeah. Um, if my job is, I'm a uh, I'm a I'm a senior vice president of programming at CBS, and I know that I've worked for thirty fucking years doing everything I can to get up to the ladder, and now I put food on the table for my kids by doing this job. Yes. And I, I don't think I know that the behaviors of one of the people, or the behavior of one of the people, or a couple of the people that I employ, could very easily cost everything. My whole mm. company can go yeah. under. Is that gutless, or is that just well? Sorry, capitalism. I, but let me, you know what I'm saying? Let me, yeah. let me, let me, let me, let me. Well, let me play devil's advocate here. Let's say you are the person who makes decisions at CBS. Mm. And Nick Cannon has worked for CBS Viacom for the last 20 years, if you include Nickelodeon. 20 years. And a grinder, he, by the way. Yeah. A brilliant man. Yeah. Brilliant man. He's made zero mistakes in 20. You know this guy. He's a creator. He created Wild and Out. He's made your company a ton of money. He hosts, you know, Mass Singer on Fox. The guy's done a million things. Um, America Got Talent. He hosts all these shows, right? Come While up. all doing a morning radio show in LA. Five <laughs> days a week. Yeah. He hosts them, the biggest morning radio show in LA. So he does all this stuff. He makes one mistake. I don't agree with any of it. He fucked up. Boy, did he fuck up. It was up. a wildly stupid comment. Well, I mean, eugenics, stupid. essentially. He, you're smarter than this, Nick. You're yeah. smarter than what he said. He went, out, he went after Jews and white people. All right. We, but you know that guy for 20 years. He's come up with all this content. He made one mistake. And you're the owner of CBS. You're the guy who runs shit. You're telling me you've never made mistakes before? Oh, I agree. So he should be crucified off the horrible mistake. Right. I don't agree with it, any of it. Now, if he came out and made an apology, it was like, I realized what I did wrong. I'm going to study my history books. I'm going to go back and learn how the Jews were prosecuted and what they've done to persecute. Have, yeah, persecute and come over here and the success that they've had. I've learned from my mistakes. 20 years of work. And because of the one mistake, now he should be fucking voted right. off the island. You're right. And, and, and what, did he, what did he do specifically? Bring, bring up his exact quote, Nick, because you keep asking. <laughs> yeah. And you, you it, don't you're wrong. It's bad. It got, I don't I mean, agree with any. He, he really, Brian. He was like flirting with eugenics, like the idea that white people are biologically savages. you are less than these people. And white people. He's saying le- white people are less than black. So he was fired. Okay. From fired. Viacom, but uh, Fox actually he he came out with apologies. Let me find the actual clip. I can I can sum it up. I mean I, I I've gone over this uh, a couple times. He essentially said that the melanin, the lack of melanin in the people who migrated north to to go to like the Norse mountains and things like that, and then Don't subsequently do it on got more white. Um, they are biologically are inferior to the people who are better prepared to deal with the the sun and the earth and 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 a living a vibrant life. Therefore, they are the real savages, and that yet they portray us as the savages white so are not, less not, than black not great the pigment of our skin and we're the savages and white people are evil and the african-americans actually the original they're the original jews that's the original that's evil. where i think he stepped in shit is that he the the, the melanin let me, let stuff see the actual not part. true but then he says we're the real hebrews and that so then you're starting to get but, oh, here, here's the other thing he did this podcast a year so ago let me, see, let me see wait wait let me find it first these are his apologies he did the podcast a year ago you know that Mike, well, that was a year ago. Wow, he banks his podcast him a year ago, so it came out now. I, I think maybe he uh, he was like reading the history books and all that, and he got too deep into it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. on one subject, 
but he royally fucked up. I'm not saying he didn't. I don't agree with anything. He He's said. a Jew of color. Well, he said blacks are the, actually the real Jews. Do you know that? Do you know that? Do you know what that theory is? It's a theory, a bio, uh, evolutionary biology theory. Well, he read about, it out of a book about. Well, so 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 the idea is as our ancestors migrated from close to the equator in Africa to northern climates. You there was less sunlight. It's all about his so apologies. you needed to lose the melanin in your skin so you but could absorb videos, more sunlight to right, create more vitamin D. I just went to videos. Yeah. Now my hair stays in my head because, well, Brandon, I use him. Dude, thank God. How about this? I'm a customer. You need help with hair loss, erectile dysfunction, or have a cold? How about are you interested in mental health or COVID nineteen home test? What the hell? Yeah, dude. This is now. You this is just here. Yeah. Nope. Him is here the for rain, all that? brother. Yeah, man. 66% of men start losing their hair by 35. Does it seem like your your forehead's moving on up? Well, dude, you got to keep what you have. It's, you got to prevent your hair loss right now. Thanks to science, hair loss can be optional. Hims connects you to FDA-approved products to treat hair loss, and they have thousands of happy customers loving their hair. Uh, if approved, you gotta, you gotta get approved, man. If your approved products will ship directly to your door, discreet little package. Yeah, but I got approved. It took me five minutes, literally. It's pretty easy, I took man. a picture and sent it to a doctor. You're right, man. Hey, anyone can make claims about treating hair loss, but if you're not happy after 90 days, just <laughs> email Hims for a full refund. Today, Hims is giving you the best offer yet. If you're not happy with your results after 90 days, Hims will give you a full refund. And right now, and it comes in discreet packaging, so nobody knows you're getting hair yeah, pills or dude, dick pills. Said that. Or like that. Yep, listeners, you guys can uh, try it free right now. Go to forhims.com/fatk. That's forhims.com/fatk. Give them the disclaimer, B. Full refund of price paid available for over 90 days supply. Refund requests must be made between 90 and 180 days after product shipment delivered. Prescription products require an online consultation with a medical professional who will determine a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Become a customer. I am, and it works. Still waiting oh, for my they're whoop. Gonna, they're going to send them. I just got word they're sending. I, I need my whoop bracelet. I know. We want to know well, how you know, I'm sleeping. They didn't want to, you know, they stopped. They didn't send them because we're both a little sicky poo. Oh. I want to know how I'm sleeping. Okay, I want to know what my recovery is about. Check. I want to know what my heart rate is doing when I'm sleeping, when I'm training, how good, when I'm hanging out. How many calories are you burning? I want to know how many calories I'm burning. Are you getting the right recovery? I want to know how, how far I'm going. Do you want a device that's going to monitor your heart rate 100 times per second? Yes, I do. That's how it's coming up with all these calculations. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a little band you wear around your wrist. How bad you want to I want to know if I'm being disturbed in my sleep. I want to yeah. know what the efficiency of my sleep is. Are you is. in the right amount of sleep? The REM, And there's nothing the better than whoop. I'm telling you, dude. Yep. I started because of Thick Boy Bike Club. I was sick of guessing how many calories I was burning, how far I was going. Whoop came along. I reached out to them. Strain. Sleep. The hardware is easy. It's, it's a, a whoop strap, strap 3.0. Like. Five-day battery life. This thing is freaking waterproof you can swim with it shower with it you never have to take it off it looks pretty sweet they got different colors different things you can pick go to whoop.com promo code fighter all right you get 15 percent off 15 percent off go to whoop that's w-h-o-o-p.com enter the code fighter at checkout save 15 percent off sleep better recover faster train smarter Optimize your performance with Whoop. Thick Boy Bike Club, get your ass a Whoop strap right now. Whoop.com, promo code fighter. I, I, I do feel for... Do you guys know Nick at all? They have you ever met him? Savages. Met him Those very briefly, he said, here, but I'm here a big is. fan. They, they He's, there. He, look, he, no, says, he does say a lot That's of kind of uh, kooky shit. Canon but. segues and discussion on skin color. And I'm going to say this carefully, he begins. To allege that people who lack sufficient melanin are a little less... Those without dark skin have a deficiency that historically forced them to act out of fear and commit acts of violence to survive. They had to be savages. Jewish people, white people, Europeans, among others. <laughs> people on social media, okay. I mean, uh, he, he should probably brush up a little bit more and talk to people like Brett Weinstein about evolutionary biology. All, 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 of, it, all, all of it, he went down such a slippery slope, and yeah. he's been in show business so long. I'm like, Nick, you're better than this. My, again, I don't fuck with anything he's talking about. He's yeah. royally fucked up. But the body of work over 20 years for CBS, Viacom, MTV, you, and he issues an apology, which his issue is he didn't want to apologize at first, but then he did apologize, which ended up fucking him because then the black people are set, uh, upset at him now. Yeah. So you have the Jews and the whites upset, then you apologize and the black people are upset, you can stick by it. So he can't win. My only thing is if, you, if you're running a company, 
You're telling me you've never made any mistakes? No, it's t- it's true. It's the, hypocritical. The, the, the problem, though, Brennan, is that it's that old joke. It's like, you can build the Sistine Chapel and come up with a cure for cancer, but if you fuck one goat... <laughs> <laughs> you're a goat fucker. You're a goat fucker, dude. I mean, at the end of the day, if you fuck a goat, yeah, I I thank know. you for curing cancer and thank you for I fucking know. sending a rocket because, to the moon. Because it's not like Nick molested kids no. or murdered somebody or raped somebody. Like those, yeah, you should never work again. But saying a, a, a comment with no data, no, obviously he's uneducated about what's going on over his body of work. And if he could apologize on that, come on. Man. Well, and also, I, I, look, I actually kind of feel bad for the guy because I'm, I'm with you. I, I think what he said was downright insulting, especially if I was a Jew, it I'd was be like clumsy. blown away. It was clumsy. But even if I was a white person, it pissed me off. Imagine either. you're Nick Cannon, all right? Like, like, let's look at his career. Guy works his ass off. He does everything he can to to build his career. All along the way, every fucking step, the black community has been like, that guy's fucking corny. <laughs> Fuck Nick Cannon. He sucks. He's not. Okay. So you're like, dude, I got to do whatever I can to like up my, because I do legitimately think he cares about the black community. I don't think he's one of these guys that's fronting it. No, he I think he's it. deeply, he care, uh, deeply concerned with like the, the welfare of the black community. So the whole time he's like, everyone thinks I'm a fucking corny, cor- a cornball. I'm going to do everything I can to like, ingratiate myself and prove that i'm not i'm not a fucking cornball i'm just a guy who works hard and and uh and, you know likes to like to speak my mind so then you go and you get this then corporate america is like well you're fucked are you are you not gonna apologize well then you do and you're you're, you're fucking yourself you know financially maybe you're looking out for yourself financially but now the same black community who's been picking on you this whole time is like, you fucking sell out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, what a you can't I, win. guy can't win. You can't win. It doesn't help that he was sitting there talking to Professor Griff. Is that yeah. that dude? Yeah. The guy who got kicked out of public enemy for being too radical. Like, well, that guy's a fucking asshole. I mean, essentially, problem. he's like Richard Spencer, but black. You he's can, bad. Yeah, you he can, does not. It was a perfect You story. can change it by not being, <laughs> by not saying, the taking groups and saying things about those groups like they're savages or animals or that's not going to work it's yeah. just not fucking i the 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 he uh, fucked up. he's the not the weird he's schadenfreude that comes with the the cancel culture too that worries me so much mm-hmm. man because there's always there's already pushback though isn't there the, absolutely you're starting already to making fun of it yeah we're like already jeremy like, jeremy renner i think like the 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 accusations came out about him about what nothing nothing like the rape short? or anything nothing like where it's automatic you're done you know but uh, a lot of like uh, his ex i don't know if it's ex-wife or just ex baby mama drug use in front of the kids constant like sex parties just being kind of like a, a slimy dude and he's got, a, he's got a, apparently he's got a substance abuse and everyone's you know going the marvel needs to fire him thing you know or at least a group of people are and Disney's like, no, no, we're cool. Let's yeah. just hold off. He's a great thing. actor. Yeah. How about that? I love that yeah, guy. Oh, phenomenal. You, you watch Hurt Locker again, you might forget how fucking. He's phenomenal. Oh, dude, him in, but I apparently he does. Town he, or yeah, he yeah. suffers from. He, I think he probably has some issues with alcohol and drugs, from what I've heard. Maybe yeah. or through the, he the grave the party, or he just likes to party. Yeah, and he's a millionaire and gorgeous. Yeah, he's very very smart guy. Have you have you seen what's going on with Johnny Depp and his case over and he so he's suing uh, Amber Heard, the son, because Amber Heard because the son came out yeah. with this huge thing called a wife beater. He's like, whoa, hold the fuck up. So he's he suing them. Sue him. So they brought Amber Heard in. And it's going well for Johnny Depp if you're watching it. Yeah. I, it is. For whatever reason, I pay attention. I read the the clips on it all the time. Yeah. The, the, oh. the problem with cancel culture, in my opinion, this is speculation. It's like I sit back and I worry not because people who maybe are, are feeling oppressed, feeling hurt, feel excitement in bringing someone else down and feeling like they have an active part in it. That's why they're doing it. It makes sense. I don't like it, but I, I get that. What I don't like and what I think is even more concerning is that this overall feeling of everyone getting excited at the misfortune Agree. of others. It's really sad. And I don't think it's just social media. I think that the real meat, like the, the actual mainstream media plays a bigger role. Um, well, well, here's one quick example. Like I was watching, um, I never watched any of Gordon Ramsay's TV until the, um, the lockdown. I just started watching some of Gordon Ramsay's shows. And there was one was it Hell's Kitchen or some other show where he goes in and he talks shit to people who don't run a restaurant right. I just started watching them too for whatever reason. And so they, 
have this episode where this guy's an asshole. He yells, he, he's petulant, he doesn't want to hear what Gordon Ramsay has to say, he's lazy, he runs... And the editing and the and the show creates this idea through 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 the way the way they created the episode made you just hate this guy and made you want to hear Gordon Ramsay lay into him. Yep. And I could feel myself going like, "Yeah, get him, Gordon. Get He's him, a fucking Gordon. asshole." Well, because I'm watching them, you know, now years later, they have the like extras on the streaming services. I'm watching it. He starts interviewing him at the beginning of before they start even going into the restaurant and finding all these flaws. And he said, yeah, I uh, my father passed away very young and he, he was our only parent. My mom died, too. And so my brother raised me and Jesus. he got in the restaurant industry and he was my hero. And I modeled everything. Wow. Everything on how my brother did it. And I'm, frankly, he was the he was the dad. I didn't know how to run a business, but I just want to be just like my brother. My brother died eight years ago oh, of like some free cancer. Christ. And so now I'm left here and I don't really know how to run this Fuck. restaurant. And, and you're like, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, this. That's but yet, but but Fox or whoever, whatever production company said, <laughs> we can't That's go that it, route. It, no yeah. one's going to want to watch. We got to create this idea so that we stand up and go, go, Gordon, yeah, fuck this Gordon, guy yeah. up. And I'm like, this is what we need to get away from. You're talking this, about that happened to Gordon or that happened to the guy Gordon? No, that happened to the guy after. Gordon was this is, and, 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 and But yet, if you yeah. watch the episode and you didn't happen to... You're like, rooting for Gordon to tear into him. If my that's, daughter that's didn't start screaming or some reason and I didn't lost sight of the... And then this thing kept going and I watched the fucking extras, which I never would have watched, I would have had no idea. And yet, the episode created this idea for the sake of ratings, for the sake of getting people to watch the show over and over again. That like no, this man bad, this man terrible. We should cheer on Gordon yep. getting upset and stuff. Yep. And and it's, I don't know. I I I we've talked about this before, but I used to work for CNN and HLN uh, a while back, and there was this instance where I was on. I'm not like a confrontational guy, but <clears> one time I was on. This is live TV, and there's this girl there. She's a reporter from you know bullshit.com. Uh, somewhere up in in the Bay Area, and there was this instance where this man, um, it, it appeared to be homeless. Who knows? But he was he was clearly not right. He was walking through the streets of San Francisco with like a, a machete. Okay. Okay. Obviously, cops are called. Can't have that. Cops call. Um, it's a group of cops. Uh, a, a, a black gentleman, by the way, the the machete guy. Um, cops come. A lot of damage. <laughs> a machete. Very, very unforgiving. Very unforgiving. Yeah, very ask, unforgiving. Ask MS-13. They can. Yeah. Do, you can do some serious damage yeah. with a uh, machete. Yeah. Um, cops come. Machete. Try to gather around him, and then they uh, initially like three or four cops, a couple of them black, corral the guy and hap happen to maybe you know throw him down or whatever they can do to get cuffs well, on him and well, take yeah. away the machete. Yeah, very, very right. appropriate. He's lucky to get shot. So we're having lucky to get shot. If I'm a cop, I might have to shoot you. Totally agree. I'm thinking, I don't know shit about policing, but I'm thinking in my head, I was like, man, that was a pretty measured way to handle it. They didn't fucking blast the guy. He has a deadly weapon. Was he naked too? No, no, but he was, he he was, was usually naked. screaming and okay. talking to himself. You know. And um, this reporter is saying like, and, and here we see yet again another um, example of white supremacy. Right? Dumbass. So wow. I, I absolutely lose my cool and I start screaming at her. Type and I, I mean, like veins coming down my neck on Type live move, television. Man. Type move. And it goes on, the crowd's cheering, everyone's yelling and everything. And I sit back down, we go to commercial break, and I'm like, fuck. I'm like, I fucked up. I really fucked up. And this this girl had to be like 21 or something. She's and I'm like, dumb, dumb. She started crying. Maybe. I, I, maybe. Uh, dumb, dumb. Uh, intellectual stuff aside, I'm like, I, I shouldn't have done that. And, I, and I'm like, man, I'm probably going to get a talking to you from the producers. I'm like, I, this is not good. So we go to commercial break. I go over and I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't. I totally don't agree with you, but I, I shouldn't have done that. That was wrong, and I apologize. She's like, it's okay. I thank you for saying that. Did you get in her face? No, we were we were ten yards apart. Yeah. But I, I'm literally They're like, into is that fun? are you fucking considering all the real white supremacy in the world? Yeah. And think about what uh, Emmett Till's family has to think about that when you're calling policemen doing their work yeah, of white supremacy. Yeah. Good, you know, you're right. You know, yeah. and I, I still think I'm right. But my point being is, I totally lost my. It was a man who would have hit him. Yeah. I get off with the show ends. Uh, I get back to the green room to take off my makeup, and the executive producer comes in, and I'm thinking like, "Oh, here he goes." He goes, "Dude, oh, love that's you. what I'm talking about." Oh, wow. Okay, and I'm like, "What?" He's like, "That's television." Here we go. You know, it is. So, two months later, uh, we have. Uh, it was like a, a explosion right when Caitlyn 
tran- uh, transferred over into when Bruce, to went, to when Bruce Caitlin. went to Caitlin. So there was a lot of trans talk. A lot. For we him. had a a, um, a a trans activist, and then also uh, some religious figure. I, I don't know if he's a priest or a pastor, but he was a man of the cloth, and he was on there, and he uh disagreed with me and disagreed with this activist but at the same time was incredibly measured very kind and was everyone was kind of talking he politely. disagreed that he, he thought should be able to oh well, just he, thought he that just trans did, that it wasn't a, a mental illness that it's someone trying oh he was saying it's not a mental he illness. was going the, the the kind of traditional religious route that a man is a man a woman's a woman you can't change that blah 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 okay I was having some disagreement with him. This lady was having some disagreement with him. But everything was very civil and and actually very and he was really likable and nice. I'm like, oh, that was that was really great. I, I hope more people saw that because you could see that you could have disagreements and, and it would be civil. I get off, I go to take off my makeup, like an executive producer comes in, he's like, We can't we can't be having you back if that's <laughs> all you got. And I go, dude. And he's like, oh, come on, babe. We're in, we're in, we're in the ratings business. Yeah, like, we need, we need yeah. to fight. And and so it just it lets you know, but, like but on, dude, on one level, or whether it's whether it's ABC or whether it's back of the channel. Okay, the okay, back. Ratings, though. But here's the truth. It's like, you know, here's it's the like truth. I tell when Brian the, when, all the time. We talk about Corona. Yeah. When the rubber People hits the metal, when the rubber hits the road, at the end of the day, actually, the truth is there is there is your position, there is there that person's position. And sometimes there is no compromise. So let me give you an example. There's a woman who just did Rogan. She did a she wrote a book called Irreparable Damage. You got these 15 year old girls who are cutters, who are suicidal, whatever it is, and some of them decide that they're trans. Mm-hmm. So they can go to Planned Parenthood, and they can get testosterone, and then Planned Parenthood can send them to a surgeon to lop off their breasts. Now, from what I understand, in some states, you don't have to tell the parents. And you don't have to be 18. Uh, they're 15. So you got a 15-year-old whose prefrontal cortex isn't even developed yet. Right. And because we have activism now in Planned Parenthood, what what th- that that this is where you go, oh, well, you're 15. So you want you think you're a man. Well, that's amazing. And we support you. As opposed to, hold on, you're 15. You're going through this thing. You've decided at this point, a lot of maybe you feel like you're a man. Yep. Who knows what's going on in your head? But you're 15. Mm-hmm. And the reason that we can't have people making those decisions for themselves when they're 15 is because they're children. They're 15. So they're minor and their brain isn't fully developed. Yeah, I want to be robot. So you may feel like a man or you may feel like a woman or whatever. I can't allow I can't allow you to take those that kind of irreparable uh, that kind of irreparable action. Because you might change your mind. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and, look, you can't get and, a tattoo until you're 18. The, but the you problem is this, is where, this is where activism comes in yeah. and starts fucking with your own children. Where they will say, you're not allowed to tell your parents. That's where I fucking draw the line. And I go, nah, that's a line I'm willing to fight for. Yeah. Has nothing not to do with 15? trans. Right now. Yeah. It's called irreparable damage. And this woman who wrote this book as a reporter, she, nobody will have her, have, nobody will have her on the podcast. Why? Because this whole trans thing is, so it's electric apparently fuck off i'd have her on i mean i wouldn't have her on here but yeah. well i mean she might you know yeah, because boring. it's not it's not our audience well what'd you know? she look like i mean hey what, what the hell <laughs> i'm just saying that, that she's a, but according a to rogan she's a very smart very smart oh, very, sure. very good journalist but yeah it, it, but anyway so there, there the thing is that I, the thing is at the end of the day we all have our positions and we all have our lines we're willing to fight for and yeah. it gets sticky it gets fucking sticky the whole it's thing awkward. sticky it, like i was listening to Clay Travis, shout out to Clay Travis. Listen to him talk about um, how politics are coming into sports now. So ESPN, for whatever reason, every day is talking about Black Lives Movement. Not that it's not important, but people aren't tuned in for ESPN, the NBA, NFL. They don't want their politics mixed in with their sports. They just want to watch the sports. But when all you're doing is covering all this stuff and the protests on stuff, you know what happened? The ratings of ESPN have never been lower. Well, that's that's what the marketplace. The marketplace it's like, goes, dude. We, uh, we listen, I want to watch sports. I wanna t- but yeah. <clears throat> in fairness, to the great ESPN. thing about sports is they're not political. The great thing about sports is it brings everybody together. No, Black, they are white, poli- but that's everything. the problem. They are political. Well, Jackie Robinson and all it goes back to well, again, the, the, the American about the, the Olympics 40s. with the with the yeah. black fist and stuff. And there's I mean, nothing the wrong with that. Sports can be very political, but yes. there's moments for it. But the 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 problem is now is like it's such a hot topic in America. So in the NBA now, instead of having their last names on their jersey, they're gonna have Black Lives Matter or an yeah. inspirational quote back there. So you're you're mixing in, you're you're, you're blurring the line. Here, here's and they're, here's they're the problem with that. People though, don't want to hear it. I, yeah. I I think in general, overall, you're totally right. I mean, I, m- m- if I turn to ESPN, I want to find out what happened to you know Gilbert over the weekend in the fight. 
I don't want to hear about much anything else. I want to get my sports. But at the same time, I got to cut Sports Network some slack right now. Sports there's radio is what else. What else are you going to talk about? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's if this is a regular life yeah. scenario, I'd yeah. say. But they'll learn, too. They, they, at the same time, look, Americans are what they are. It's the American story again. So Americans are like black, white, Asian, doesn't matter. They're all like, I want to watch sports. You're talking about this too much. It's like anything else. It's how we have to respond. Well, we you start talking Cap- about COVID. People are like, shut the fuck up about COVID and no, they make come us to laugh. Here to be, have fun. We want to hear dick jokes. Yeah. Well, think about Colin Kaepernick when he was doing his whole thing, ratings went down. So people are like, wait, what? Mm. You know, we're just trying to watch the games, man. Well, Ballers is interesting because when I was... Yeah, it's you an keep older show. And it's old <laughs> and you just got to No, hold on. It? Baller, Ballers is an older show. When was the last time Ballers was on the air? 1948. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a while ago. But in yeah. Ballers, uh, toward the, the last season, the fourth season, in fact... They're talking about Black Lives Matter. They have sneakers with it on. They're talking about the Kaepernick thing. They're talking about taking a stand as a black athlete. It's pretty interesting. Well, because when that was yeah, shooting, that was way before all this stuff. No, no. This this the, the when first episode it? two two thousand fifteen ended in two thousand nineteen. Oh, totally. so they were dur- they all okay. they're doing is copying what's going on. Got gotcha, 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 If okay, you if okay. you I am I am not Mr. Race Card Guy, and I hate to to do that. So race I, car guy, race card. I'm not the guy who race wants car, to race play car. racial politics and everything. I I'm I'm very upset by a lot of these uh unnecessary kind of waves that are being made but i will say like i i read this book about step and fetch it you do you know who that is i know you might he's a race car driver you know he was <laughs> <laughs> he was he was uh uh uh, uh entertainer in like the 30s and 40s, a black entertainer and, and he was at the time one of the highest paid actors in the world but he was a black american oh that's cool but and he was this incredibly talented woodland you know, hills he California. was an incredibly talented guy, but he wrote a book and then had to look back on his life where he had to do all to to become this amazing American success. He had to have a bunch of white studio execs tell him now, now do the hello there, let me go, you know, and yes, essentially doing his own minstrel act. And I got to thinking, like, if you're a 20 year old black kid right now and you make it to the NFL or the NBA, and it's like, how far from that? from step and fetch it situation is is your situation where it's like you've probably had been shit on by by the corporate world not 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 even bring race into it just the idea of like the 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 structured society has but just fuck fucking put their 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 to these athletes foot on your neck your whole if you're a young black kid from an inner city neighborhood gotcha. you know or a poor neighborhood your, your whole life has been just been fucking people f- just providing adversity for you then you make it now you're a millionaire people are applauding you all the time and then you have to keep getting corporate edicts on how you can like behave and think and feel about social and political issues. Sure. I'd be like, okay, you know what? Fuck, fuck you. Fuck everyone. Yeah. You know, the same thing goes back. It's like the people who sitting sitting back in their couch saying, I just want to watch football. Well, I don't know if they do that. I the, think the, the only thing is that no no business in the in the history right. of the United States, I don't know about international, but in the United States has created more millionaires than the NFL mm. or NBA. Yeah. In the African American society. Good point. No, it's it's and it's, also you're uh, you're you're working for a corporation. So anytime you work with any corporation, there's going to be certain protocols you have to observe. Right. There's a dress code. There's a there's a code of conduct that you have to observe. The NFL is very strict. Yeah. About all kinds of shit like that. that you know. So no, every, everyone's really worked for a company, right? Everyone's worked for a company. You understand that it doesn't matter what you can do. What's what's free for you to do in this country but you, work for, you netflix, work for a business believe me. if i promise to pay you money you are going to do exactly well, how when I you say. work for netflix or a company like that i promise you there are certain things and a lot of things you can't say out loud yeah you can't you can't email out loud. it's you weird to in tweet t- in today's we know this in today's world of like multimedia where everyone even a-list stars have like 11 you know projects going it's really strange how let's say you have a big deal with netflix i, I don't know this for a fact but let's use him as an example let's say bill burr right they're paying him a lot of money to do a TV show at Netflix. It's weird how a lot of their um, code of conduct can bleed into his other work. Yes. Where they're like, you can't go making, I'm not saying this happens with Bill Burr, but it, no. he's an example. Example. Um, you can't say so-and-so in your comedy standup, or you can't go do a podcast where you talk about this issue because we're giving you $7 million. So, and it's like, really? What? 
still I, the, I don't work for you over here you know that yeah. that's that's a little it's a really weird thing I think the good news is that for the most part you can say whatever the fuck you want you can't though i mean really you're, you're gonna depending if you're if you're a comic you sure as fuck can yeah no you can't yeah you can no way if you work for a corporation but, no way you know. if you work for if you if you work for netflix if you have a big podcast that's what i'm saying say I said, no, no, no. I said, if I said you're just netflix. collecting your checks going around the country going to comic comedy if stores, you're solely you're the, comic, you guys you can do whatever you want you guys are the last last hope for like what, Actually, what though, the, the idea uh, the american idea of like you know of like mark twain or or, yes. or great thinkers because depends what truly you want. depends what you want does. If, if you're if you're a bill burr if you're especially the best examples are a good friend joe rogan rogan can do whatever the fuck he wants to do yes fuck you money outside that there's not you know well, here's you gotta remember i work for showtime i work for yeah. complex i you know I, I i still have to i don't have fuck you money i still gotta watch my p's and q's but, but i would sure. say this i would say this um, I'm not allowed to say things I wouldn't say anyway a lot of times right mm. so so what I mean by this is this I don't say things that are like anti I don't say racist things I never thought they were funny I don't make jokes like that well, I never no, liked doing that. no they're not funny but you what I'm saying is that. that we don't do that anyway. But you wouldn't be you. I wouldn't like right? do it. I'm I, not your boss. You know what I'm saying? Kinda, though? I'm kind of. But do you know what I mean? But, I mean, I'm kind of running. Hey, the show. wait a minute. I know, sorry. But do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't really. We it's don't not, say that gig. stuff yeah. anyway. But you wouldn't be. I, I wouldn't put up with it. The, like the, if you were saying, wait, 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 wait. What if there? There's there's racist comedy. It's fucking straight funny and can be useful. Well, if it's like Dave Chappelle, but Louis C.K. joke about about. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little racist. Like, if I walk into a pizza joint and it's a bunch of black women making my pizza, <laughs> I'll be like, all right, well, maybe there's just, maybe, yeah. maybe I should keep walking and just yeah, see if there's funny. another pizza. But yeah, that's funny. fucking genius. Yeah. But that that's all funny. But but I, at the end of the day, I, I I think the things that you're not allowed to say, when I see like this Nick Cannon stuff, I don't say that shit anyway, mainly because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. It's not who you are. I just don't want to hurt no, people's I feelings. But, but I think there's a freedom with a guy like Rogan or, you know, I think Chappelle's the best comic to ever do it. There's a freedom with Chappelle where... It, you're, you're not going to cancel him. So, yeah. like, when you watch a special, you might be like, oh, he's going to get some hot water for that. He doesn't give a fuck. What are you going to do? Yeah. He's, Carole, on, Carole he's is, undeniable. Corolla is a good example, too. Corolla is a great example. You, if you listen to what Corolla says, yeah. Corolla, if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're not a Corolla, if you're anti Corona, bro, so those people who think Corona is the end of the world and the, the economy should be shut down for the next five years and we should all lock down our house, it's only going to get worse. If you're that dude, you don't listen to Corolla. Don't listen to uh, Clay Travis because yeah. those guys don't answer to a boss. Yeah, and they give you facts and I just shoot it. from the fucking hip. Yeah. Like when Corolla starts sticking up for Jimmy Kimmel, there's nothing better, man. Yeah, because you can tell they're best friends. It'd be like if you were going through the same shit. Corolla just fucking sticks it to him, man. Yeah, he's great. Intent matters too, though. I'll stick up for Kimmel publicly too. too. Me too. I I intent matters a Fuck big yeah, deal. It does. Like <laughs> if someone puts on blackface for the sake of putting on blackface to harm someone to hurt their that's that's honestly the most repugnant that's one well, of the more repugnant I just, I just wouldn't want to hurt somebody's feelings right i mean you you understand you're you're saying i'm going to put on a costume that brings terror to people that reminds people of years and years of of, of oppression now if you're painting your skin black so that you can better resemble Karl Malone. Yeah. That's a big fucking but, difference. But that goes back to my big fucking That goes back to my point, Mike. It's like, let's look at the body of work of Jimmy Kimmel for the past 20 years, man. Has he ever said anything racist? Has he done any of that racist shit? No. No. And then you point towards but, but, this one Karl Malone skit that he did, which was funny. Yeah. But, you know, I, I guarantee if you ask him to do it now, he'd never do it. Or how about Fallon? Dude, he did blackface making fun of his friend Chris Rock. Chris Next Rock to was Chris there. Rock. Next to him. Well, but again, look at the body of work. The most, most of the people that I know that I'm friends with wouldn't. Um, they're not. They're not racist. Like uh, when nobody's looking and they don't do it. Like, like, think about it for a second. Like to be mean and to be that ignorant. I don't really I don't want you friends. around. Here, here, you know, that, that, this is most of us, right? I mean, most that, of us. That, here's the thing. Absolutely. I, I, said, I remember said to Rogan, I said one time when he was like 28 mm. and he was a fucking Boston kid, you know, like like when, when Nanette, that 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 yeah. Hannah Gatsby came out and said, straight white men better pull their socks up because I got the shit beat out of me because I was gay. I don't know a fucking straight dude. I, I'm serious. I Never. don't know a fucking straight dude Never. that I would hang out with who was a friend of mine. That wouldn't have come to her defense if if Never. if any of my friends saw Hannah Gatsby getting the shit kicked out of her by some asshole <laughs> yeah. dude. 
I would fuck that dude up. I gotta I be honest. We all beat him. I, I gotta be honest. beat the fuck out of him because we'd be like, "You're beating up this woman who's gay." Any woman, she's gay. I'd Any, fucking I, stomp you. I, yeah, wouldn't, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't realize if she was gay. Right. And I would I'd be stomping on your fucking yeah, head. Got, but I'm most of my friends slap that your way. Stupid face. <laughs> right, one time, one time, Rogue, then I'd come at you. I'd because yeah. my residual anger. I'd sma- I'd, I'd paint I would slap your face. you like, "Why go like your friend Brian?" Like, then I go. I'd look at the camera. I go, "Long time coming." I block and I go. It's been a long time coming. I do that to you. Yeah. Here's a but, 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 but with, Rogan said, Rogan, but just really quickly, he's 28 and he goes, <laughs> I thought he was a bro from Boston. I said, you know, I've never heard you say a prejudice thing. And you're a Boston, Jersey guy, you know. And he just goes, <laughs> it's so funny. He goes, because I'm not a fucking idiot. I go, what do you mean? <laughs> he goes, I, I, I grew up, I lived in Boston and Jersey. You want to see really dumb white people? I'll take you to yeah. see really dumb white yeah. people too. He goes, well, dude, it never made Bill any Burr's wife sense. is black. The right. kid is Half right. black, it's, right? It's, it's like so stupid. I don't know. But you know, right. Kimmel's going to lose his job. You think? Yes. Okay. He's going to lose his job over that. Mm-hmm. Wow. He's on. He's on break right now. Do you know that? Cancel yes, culture is real. I do. Cancel culture is real. They're letting him bow out with grace. Uh, you want to bet? He. Mm, okay. He'll I, find another. I job. I don't know. I don't know. He'll yeah. find another job. I mean. Oh but, yeah, on what network? I mean, he'll maybe do the Man Show with Carol, or he can go on a podcast and make millions of dollars. We, ABC, NBC, CBS ain't gonna wow. hire him because they're. They Do you gutless. think? Okay, wait, wait. But guys. here's the thing. That's why. That's, will, this is what will, I think. He's bowing out with. They're going. You know, we gotta get rid of. He goes. I do. Wow. I'm about with Grace. Don't Do you think though? So, maybe let's say you're. Say you're right, and he 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 is released from his job as host of Jimmy Kimmel Live. <laughs> Don't you think that there would be such a huge groundswell of support for him in his next job because. The 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 really the population of people that get crazy over really unreasonable stuff like this small is very small and I think they're the loudest on, on Instagram and I think there are that people on Twitter if Kimmel then went to uh, a podcast or or a Netflix show <laughs> that people will be like oh he's that guy who didn't apologize and said hey I wasn't being right ra- I was I know I know I'll fall him wherever and I just think like maybe I'll there would him. be especially nowadays where everyone feels so persecuted by everything who doesn't like, like no I, I, who does I think he's awesome. the best host there is he's super nice awesome. who wouldn't he, follow him? he's always been Let's that get guy. him on the podcast I, I, I would follow him but I don't think he's doing a lot of podcast right now. having some issues <laughs> yeah. um why not I got punked on. by trying to stick up for a woman by the way it just reminded me when you said the oh for she was like getting slapped around and you stuck up I, you got slapped around very re- not all um, not that I didn't get slapped around but I I definitely turned into a bitch I I was driving this wasn't that long ago i was driving home but ironically from muay thai i was driving home and uh i'm pull up to um rose and lincoln in venice there's that whole foods there yeah and behind it there's like the loading dock and i'm just driving like at a stoplight and i'm just minding my own business getting ready to go home and i look over and there's these two homeless people arguing not at all surprising or new for venice california (laughs) all of a sudden it's a guy and a girl and all of a sudden he just fucking but boom! She's fucking kicks. front kicks Spartan. her right to oh the chest. God. John, this is Venice. Right to her chest, and she falls down. Whoa! So I, without even thinking, I almost impulsively, I, I threw my car in park, and I, I got. I was like, "Hey!" And he turns around, and he goes, Hur! and he like, and he's like fucking missing teeth and shit. And he zombie. wasn't like big guy, but like he turned and he looked he's like a zombie. You're gonna have your hands full. And not only that, in my mind, Crazy in, the, in, in in the in a matter of a second, all these thoughts go through my. Head. I was like. Am I really gonna put hands on this guy who definitely has diseases? Polio, yeah, and sure. uh, you know, it's and this crazy. is prior prior to COVID or anything. But then I'm like, well, really? What am I? Am I gonna just head kick him and hope for the best and run away? Like, and then I was like, hey, be cool. You can't do that. <laughs> that was my. <laughs> and what he did. like it's an after school special. I was like, you can't do that. He goes, I don't do that. Fuck you. <laughs> By the grace of God, there's some uh, dudes who worked for Whole Foods in like the loading and, and they had their little walkie talkie yeah. things and they come over and they're like, hey, we're calling the cops right now. We're going to go. He's like, oh, fuck you, fuck you. And he just runs away. But I, in what my the, heart, I was like, what the girls I thought want? I was Jason Statham coming better? to sit. And then I was like, I took <laughs> what the girl want do better? anything. I'm thinking like, I'm the man. I'm going to go over. I'm going to help her up. She probably yelled at you. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. like she, she thinks she's Jesus. Yeah. Eats, uh, eats shit. I do you want better. Mm-hmm. My buddy she in France, in my buddy head. in France studying Muay Thai, my buddy George and his buddy, and his friend is really like taking it very seriously. And they're in Paris, beautiful city. Sure. And there's a guy attacking a woman against a car. And uh, my friend's buddy goes over and goes, I do Muay Thai, kicks him in the fucking leg, 
elbows him, punches him. The guy fucking falls down. But the guy's not that good. He's not that athletic. The guy goes, what the fuck are you doing? And the guy he was hitting was the brother of that woman who was having a diabetic seizure. <gasps> and he was trying to hold her down and control her. And so oh he, my that guy, God. yep. And that guy went to the hospital. And so my friend, my friend's friend, brought him flowers every Jesus day Christ. and said sorry but he was in the hospital for three days fuck uh oh, but you know so you got to be careful yeah you definitely she was it. having a diabetic seizure it was just a much my fucking sister she's having a I, in like regular life i've gotten in so few <laughs> physical altercations but i can so rarely think of any that went well for me like yeah one one time i i absolutely uh obliter uh, hit a home run with my <coughs> face and cheap totally cheap shot at him but it was worth it um, and I still feel totally good in doing it. And I've told this story <laughs> on the air enough that I now feel comfortable saying without getting like uh, charges brought against me. <laughs> but um, prior to marijuana being fully legalized in California, it was just medical stuff. So in Venice, there there's just tons of dispensaries and they all had these guys who were out in front like trying to promote their said, go get your medical card, come yeah. get your medical card. Come. And there's this guy, and he's, he was big. He wasn't in good shape, but he was big person, he was big kind of fat. And uh, he's like, "Hey, man, get you come get your your medical card." And I'm walking my dogs, and I was like, ah, "I'm I'm okay, man. It's cool." And he's like, "Oh, what? What? You got you got that pink lungs? Little bitch got pink lungs." And I'm like, "Uh, no, I just I don't. <laughs> little bitch got pink." Yeah, lungs. and and it's a Saturday in summer in Venice. There's thousands of people around yeah and i'm like i know i i just don't smoke weed so he's like oh yeah you don't smoke you're not man enough to smoke weed ain't, ain't got any hair on your chest and and he starts now he starts doing like a like a defensive back if i'm a wide receiver i'm walking like this and he's like this like as i'm trying he's to cut you off yeah he's, Watching he's, he's cutting cutting you off. Fucking cut and so i got i got like uh overwhelmed with like almost like fear like this guy's trying <laughs> Triggered, to yeah, yeah and so i put my dog's leashes into my left hand and i just went wham and just cracked him full swing as he's looking away trying to get people to pay attention to him punking me and i just cracked him he's little not even over here not even looking at me and i just fucking cheap shot him right and he, he did i didn't knock him out but he fell down and i could tell he was seeing he was stars out, like yeah. and i go did you run away and i go oh my god i just committed mm. felony assault in front of thousands yeah. of people and I take my dog and I start sprinting away. It was like those signs you see when you're going to Mexico where the yeah. family's getting dragged behind. Yeah. My poor dog's like, oh, no. <laughs> and I just ran away and I went home and I was like, oh, fuck. And I never told anybody about it for like a year. And then I went on Loveline. I, so I and opened up good. and I was uh, waiting. A was, fat guy, if it's a fat white guy, I'm not going to be intimidated. Yeah. If he's Samoan, yeah, I'm going to be full. afraid. You got I'll tell you, I, you ah. know, I, I, I'd never get in a fight publicly. The closest that if I ever do get in a fisticuff ever is on the bike trail. These bikers, it's not really? mountain bikers. Mountain bikers are great. Mountain bikers, they got they, they they stay in their lane. Everyone does their own shit. It's the people in the tight spandex mm. and they're on like the road bike, but it's on the mountain bike. Mm. They just for whatever reason they always yell at people or you know you shouldn't have your headphones in. They yell if you don't have a mask on. Like they always say something. That's that's and those especially guys. like if I'm going through something, and someone yells. I'm like, ah, oh, dude. There's nobody around, but what, what do you think you would do? It's so strange. If somebody, if you had to fight a guy like that, would you choke him or, or squeeze him, or would you punch him? I'd punch him right in the face. You would? Yes. And then get on my bike. I'd take his bike. I'd throw it off the mountain, and then get on mine and keep going down. Who's the guy though that when you? They, I'm telling you, all, dude, all the time. Because that the, guy's every, got every, huge nuts. Every time I ride, they're on their bike to say something. That's Take your headphones off. What, what you have to what do, do you is, care yeah, to? What you have to do is go, look at my ears. It's not going to work out for you. That's what you do. No, like I, just, I just pounds. pretend I don't hear him. I keep going. But every t it's only those guys in the the, the in the spandex and like the right. There, for the there was a guy team. in Marina Del Rey. I used to see. I'd be walking my dog. This fucking guy, probably 50, very big, very good shape, bald head, looked like a, like a cop of some kind. And such a dick. He was right. He would ride people. He's just, he was got to be a, probably 6'4", but with those long legs, just a bit, you'd have your hands full. And he was such a dick. And he was in the, he would always be in his bike. And, and cars would go, go, hey, fuck face, yeah. watch yourself. And he was so aggressive. And every day I'd have my dog and I'd be like, 
I would have to fight him. Well, I, dude, Brian Callen would have to fight him. I'd have my hand folded. I might get my ass still, kicked, But I just hated him so much. It's a I special like, kind of person to speak. I'm like, yeah, I was like, you're just, a bully. Just get your work out and shut the fuck up. Right. Well, it's like th there's there's this one trail I go down. It's uh, you go by this cool. It's in Santa Monica Mountains. You go by. They have this old World War II post. It's dope. It's it's way high. And then you go down the mountain. And then to the left is the bike trail where it is straight for biking. No one walks it. Everyone knows the bike trail because you go up and it's down. There's jumps and like it's fantastic. And this dude's walking with his hot ass shoes. So hot. That's how I noticed them. They're walking hand to hand and they're on the middle of the bike trail with a bike. It's a single track. No, I can't go guy. left. I can't go. I, can't, I don't want to die. Okay. So I'm like, watch out. And the guy was like, fuck you, bro. We're walking here. And I'm just looking. I'm like, what? What? Is, it's just, I'm, I'm like, what are you thinking, dude? What's going to happen, man? Tell me. If I, if you, you, you probably talk shit like this your entire life and no one's ever done anything. That's the That's thing. That's why you're doing it. That's if what I it is. jump off this bike, fuck, dude. man. You know what? I, I, that, that's, I think part of like training in anything like yesterday, Malik was holding mitts for me. And then he started hitting me back with the mitts. And what I realized, I don't know if this is going to be shocking to you, is that I'm not able to do anything against him when yeah, he starts doing sure. that because he can hit me everywhere. Yes. And he's been doing it since he was seven. And when you do that with a guy who's, what's Malik, 165? Yeah, and then thin. And he can kill me. Yeah. And then I look at legs you and I go, like yeah, but he can knock you the fuck yeah. out. Not with and his then legs. I, no, yeah. but with his fucking hands. Yeah. And then I look at you and I go, uh, when when you're a regular dude and you've been training and you see those ears and you see the size of them, you go, oh, that's going to be a disaster. That's not me. good. Take all the UFC experience. <clears throat> take all that away. But just, it, it could be anyone. I agree. Why, dude, why? Don't be that why disrespectful. You don't know who you're fucking with. No. You, but, just, but also, like, you you saw me coming a mile away. Just step to the side, dude. He why might say be, anything? He might be, why do you want problems? Well, that guy, that guy, that I definitely doesn't train and secondly has never really got his ass kicked. no he because might be you you just you you learn quickly i i'm i'm not uh advocating violence and i'm not even good I at am. fighting but what i will say is that there is a very clear-cut very very useful kind of night and day uh learning experience from being physically humbled yep. that that is way better than being uh, like Absolutely. ridiculed like Every guy should. I don't. I don't want people to end up in the hospital. But like, learn, talk shit, get hit. Like, Agreed. if you don't learn that, it, you, you go just, your whole life. You're you like, just well, you're just gonna keep a doing it. And I'm, like, you know, you're, you're in a fancy area. You know, yeah. Santa Monica Palisades. So I'm sure everyone. No one's. They're just gonna expect they're gonna sue you. Well, it's like for whatever reason, I sent you and Rogan pictures, and I post on Instagram. Oh my Dude, God. I saw four rattlesnakes. Crazy. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? One was big, and it was like this cool blue. What do you call it? A dirt noodle. Uh, dirt serpent. No, but you call it a, a noodle. danger noodle. It was, it That's was, what I used to call my dick. Dude, it was, it makes sense. Yeah. So dude, it was big. It was like this big. That one right there. Just and he, it was like a cool blue. And there's was this. Is it a rattler or is it something else? Oh, that's a rattler, Papa. Wow. He's a cool blue. That's a beautiful you hear, you hear me at the end and she goes, Thank you. Whoa. That's a beautiful Isn't snake. that cool? I love seeing them now. They don't really scare me, but four of them, I was like, What the fuck's that's going nuts. on? But you hear the lady. Um, watch. She goes, Thanks. I go, No problem. Cause she's she's coming right. I see these titties flopping right. She's coming. <laughs> I see these tits like this. Was she, was she naked? I see these impossible she... tits like this, what? right? And then I see the snake, and I and she's coming straight for it, and I'm like this. She Sounds has like a dream. Dude. I'm like this, and she's like, and I I'm pointing like this. he's come. He started at the front, and she's gonna run right into him, and I'm like this. I'm all snake, snake, and she goes, she goes what? I go, there's no, you don't see the giant rattlesnake. She goes, oh, they're harmless. I was like, <laughs> yeah. All right. She was so mad I interrupted her jog. I was like, what the fuck? Did I bite you? That's not true, by the They're way. They're harmless. I'm like, oh, oh you're a moron. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, it's, it's so strange. Like when people are entering into danger, not because they're fearless or they're tough or they're courageous, but because they so have no idea what they're talking about. Oh, like that, that bothers me a lot. It's a gorgeous snake, man. Well, that's a different one. That was a different one. Fuck. Anytime I see him, I stop. Dude, look at that. Yeah, they're fascinating. They're actually fascinating. You that know? big one, it was like this weird, like metallic blue and black. They're wow. they're so cool looking. I mean, obviously, you don't want to fuck. Are there Western them. Diamondbacks? I think right. Yeah, they're so. cool. Are there different rattlers around here? Yeah, or is it all different. Western Diamondback? Uh, Southern California has gnarly critters. 
Gnarly. I mean, tarantula. No, hawks, nowhere in the. No, we're not in the uh, Australia ballpark, but we have some gnarly. But snakes, for, as far as ca- uh, U.S. goes, I think Mountain we're lines, right at the top of the list. Us in Arizona yeah. and Florida. Well, I'll tell you what was it, it's weird is there, there's one part I go down where it's single track and it, it, it's like rock and it turns in like a little bit of a blacktop and you're flying. Sometimes you'll see a big rattler just sp- like soaking up the sun, uh, and it's like, yeah. dude, what are you gonna do? A lot of different kinds of snakes. And it's like, it's kind of cool that it's, you know, four pounds. And it you get so scared of it. You know, like a bear, you go, okay, I'm scared of a fucking bear. Go ahead, go back That up. thing is less than a chihuahua, and it'll fuck if you it up. If it bites you, it's trouble. Is that a boa? Fuck. Is that yeah. what it said? It was a what, rosy boa? Can you go back up? Oh, the one above? Yeah, rosy boa. That's a boa. rosy boa? They have them in Southern California? It says California snakes. Wow. The, the first rattlesnake ever saw, I posted, dude. It was huge. It was an anaconda. Yeah. It was a rattlesnake anaconda. Was a big boy. I was so fucking scared. What is that? Racer, a racer. Kaluber constrictor. Pretty cool snakes. You ever see yeah. a mountain lion up there? No. I lied to Brian said I did. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> you saw one? You did? I used to I saw a bobcat scared the fuck out of me. I used to ride horses at the Sunset Ranch by the Hollywood sign. A friend of mine, Taylor, um, entrusted me to take care of his horses. He's a real cowboy. And he entrusted me to take care of his horses while he was in the police academy. And I was more than happy to do it i got this crash course in like how to really take care of a horse and really ride clean their shoes the whole thing so one day i take this horse molly out and uh, the 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 kind of foreman there had told me he's like you can go down uh, you can go for a ride after sundown <laughs> because there's the the cats they come i'm like shut the f- are you serious cats. he's like he's like yeah they are big they they are very they, these horses are very scared of them too and i go whoa what well, I have no choice. I work until 6 p.m. I, I Sometimes I got to come. He's like, if you see him, you'll jump off your horse. And I go, fuck you. I have a 1,200-pound yoked-out animal. I'm going to yeah. jump off it? He says, no, he will confuse the, the animal and he will scare him. <laughs> that makes sense. And I'm, so I'm thinking, I'm like, maybe this guy's fucking with me, right? Sure enough, come around the corner no one night, I'm right, and I'm all by myself, and I turn the corner. And it's, Is it pitch dark? No, no, no. It was like dusk. Okay. But it was like... Um, like 30 meters away and you see and you're like whoa wow. that's way bigger than i thought they were how big oh yeah 150 pounds yeah like like uh, the biggest dog there is and just much bigger than and, and 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 jack like 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 jack francis and ganu animal shred, yeah just shred jack. city so i go shoulder uh, like that. and i always kept a knife in my boot at, at uh the 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 a blade the, yeah Cat because blade. people told me to do that they said you could get tied up in the stirrups it's always good to have just a knife to cut yourself loose from so i always kept one in my boot and i and i, I thought about what that guy said and i pulled it out like i jump off the horse i go hey! and the thing like calmly looks at me turns around and walks away really and i go what Jesus Beastmaster motherfucker and of course the horse is just sitting there like oh, okay yeah you because my, my initial reaction was get on stay on the horse and just turn around and fucking sure dust off yeah but the, the horse is scared shitless too so you never know if you can the horse, maybe horses sound uh, like they're there and, they're I, and I'm by I'm not even like an advanced <laughs> rider so I mean so who you're knows not gonna be like, like, yeah exactly you know you maybe hear, something like really you ever hear a mountain lion scream no fuck bring it up on YouTube they can scream. I, I, I see. It, if I ride early enough, I'll see a lot of coyotes, bobcats, shit ton of rattlesnakes. Coyotes are shitty animals. Fuck coyotes. Yeah, coyotes are bad people. Yeah, do the other one. <laughs> Dude, that's from hell. That's. <laughs> are they fighting? That's. There's that cop. That's scary. Go 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 back. We won't be able to play any of this, by the way. Oh no. No. We'll I'll get, play just like a we'll tiny demonetized. sample. Let's, let's chill one? with you That reminds me. I want to run something by you, too. You're both, be. We'll you're both uh, clever, smart, you know, deep-thinking <clears throat> fellas. I'm not, by any stretch of the imagination, Mr. Wild Tinfoil Hat Guy. I, you know, I, I, like Ooh, I like Sam Tripoli very much, yeah. but I'm not the guy who thinks about the alternative ways of, of life, and I certainly don't disagree with evolution or science in any way. Sure. I'm too dumb to even fucking come up with some idea. But I was thinking the other day. I was watching TV, and they were talking about the, the how impressed scientists are with the development of these great apes, and that that is the second in line as far as intellect in the animal kingdom. That humans, obviously on top. The next thing is these great apes. And they were showing them doing this thing where they can, a light would flash in a pattern like Simon says, and then they would do the fucking pattern. Yeah. And I'm like, 
That's number two. That's fucking that's, number two. There's, there's no, a billion species, and yeah. they, and they all kind of go like this. Then there's this utterly monstr monstrous gap between us Huge. and number two. This thing, they're so impressed by the fact that it can follow a pattern. That is weird. I watched SpaceX go into space and land where yeah. they wanted it to uh, land. Human and it, a little smarter. What? Okay. A little smart. We how, learn. We learn. How? But octopus. How is there? There. Hey, there's only the one big divide. Chimps have been the same since they showed up. Exactly. Human beings have what's called potential. It's the fundamental difference between animals, as we know them, and human beings. But human wait. Human beings have imagination and potential to become whatever their mind's eye can see. And my my question is, including why, going beyond their own by, uh, evolution. Why only one species? And there is this there That's is this incredible well. gap of time where even the smartest archaeologists and, 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 and scientists and evolutionary scientists, they go, yeah, somewhere around 5,000 years ago when they know between 5,000 and 5,500 years ago, the, the pyramids were erected. But you're getting into... You're they getting can't into, explain how the pyramids are well, the way they are. Because it might be a simulation. Perfect. Because you're getting into questions that now physics and religion are trying to answer, which well, are questions like human beings might be self-replicating machines already we might we have this insane ability to create uh not only our own reality but go beyond our own biology and our own evolution we're starting to be able to control our own evolution have, have you seen the have you been following the uf ufo stuff where the government a little bit. confirmed yeah. the ufos and all that stuff? yeah that one that they, where they actually confirmed it but and, my dad and, and they're saying kind of like you know the 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 science and technology that these UFOs have is yeah. so much more advanced than well it, it, it accelerated have. not only accelerated with speed but in in height change something that's bizarrely physically and, I and, mean, the, just, and the temp they said they estimated it's going 240 miles an hour but just chilling and uh, then able to go any direction and then also you know the the way our uh, fighter pilots were able to pick it up because People were like, "Oh, it's a bird," but the way our system works, it doesn't pick up uh, animal life. Yeah. It picks up only solid, like metal objects or whatever. That's how the system works. That shit's crazy. But it's also the temperature of it was minus like a hundred. Like it was basically, it'd be frozen if it, if we knew if it was on Earth. That that's it's crazy. That type of shit is is mind blowing, especially because for the first time we're getting it from a really really well vetted kind of naval officer and a pilot. Like yeah. see, these these are not. It's always like Tom DeLong or like some crazy fucking shit that him, yeah. you know Joe Rogan would talk to on his old sci fi show. Yeah. And you're like, I'm not listening to a goddamn word that guy. Not but then word. when you get like real like naval like yeah. captains, are like yeah. Man, and this guy isn't UFO like UFO just means un unidentified object. Right. right? My so, dad worked at uh, worked at NORAD and worked at the Pentagon uh, in the right. 70s. He was high level um, Air Force intelligence, and he's like, unexplained uh, objects in our airspace is absolutely not strange it happens quite often actually yeah. but not having some level of reasonable explanation as to what it might have been um th that is new and this 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 doesn't make much sense no because you have you have these engineers talking about the way it was moving at the speed and the temperature they can't explain it yeah they don't know what's going on like you have real experts analyzing it because wow. we don't because and also there's no propose like there's no fire there's no, no push propulsion. they don't know because usually there's an engine they can't figure it out hmm. it's real fascinating it is fascinating. Let's go to current events. Current events with the guys. It's current events with the guys. And Kat. And Kat. <laughs> current events with the guys. And Kat. Okay. okay, so on Monday, Dave Chappelle went and visited Kanye West after his meltdown because a couple of hours after that whole presidential rally situation happened, Kanye jumped onto Twitter and had a... Twitter storm where he was saying that Kim and Kris Jenner are trying to get him locked up into some sort of mental asylum. He's been trying to divorce Kim for years. A get Out was based off of his life. Uh, just a lot of really weird, incoherent things. And so he quickly deleted all those tweets or whoever's running his page deleted those tweets. Dave Chappelle went to go check up on him. And this is the video. This one here? Yep. Dave, can you please just make us smile? The world needs some, you know, we need some, some joy. Some, some smile. Right? Yeah, we need a smile. Brotherhood is real. Love is real. It's 
awkward they made this video. He made him make this video. If you keep watching it, it feels very awkward because Kanye keeps trying to get Dave to say a joke. Yeah, there's no need for this. Like, why do you have to blast the world that Dave Chappelle came to check on your well-being? And uh, let me ask you guys. Nothing a comedian likes more than when you're on your personal oh time and they say, God. make us laugh, please. Just oh, no, I'm that, shooting like your feet. Like when you're doing uh, just so, so give us a little insight whether you, the fans are going to see tonight. What the fuck? Uh, no. What? Awkward. Oh, my God. Can you imagine if like, this is awkward. James Cameron was on an interview and they're like, tell us a little bit about uh, some scenes in the movie before we go see it tonight at the God, movie rear. Can man. we just, <laughs> can you get some? <laughs> it's so strange. This, the whole thing, it's sad, man. It's very it's sad. sad. It is. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you said that. I Listen, Kanye, much like President Trump, he makes a lot of this himself because he has been such a polarizing figure. But we're, we're watch. I'm not a professional, but I really feel like we're watching mental illness at play here. And mm -hmm. it's not it's not entertainment. It's not funny. No, it's we not shouldn't funny. all be gathering around no. going, oh, this is, What's next? this is a sick man. And he needs He's a father help. four. Yeah. That's the bigger problem. He's father yeah. four. What I mean, does she have? How many kids? She actually had, she carried one to term. Or how many kids? Did I think she, she had two, two to term herself, and then two through a surrogate. Yep. Hmm. I I don't know. I feel I do. I genuinely feel bad for the guy, and I don't. I just don't think this type of attention is is helping. If probably hurting so much more. And I promise you, Dave Chappelle didn't come out there, so he put it on Twitter. No. that Came to check on your well being. No. Even Dave's probably like, this is the fucking problem, dude. Yeah, and Twitter well, and Instagram doesn't need to know your entire personal life. Steve-O um, always tells them, and I would never talk about someone else's kind of recovery, but he's obviously a public figure and has talked about this himself so many times. I think it's a really important story. He's like, um, you know, Steve-O made a living for doing stunts in front of a camera, and he's been open. He's, I desperately need attention, and I want attention from po posting these things and doing these stunts. And when he got really close to the end, um, you know, the Jackass guys did a, a real intervention. And when they all showed up, uh, Steve was like, yeah, dude, he got out the cameras and he, <laughs> and, uh, he said it was right then when I knew because Johnny Knoxville, I don't know if you ever met the guy, there's only varying levels of happy. There's no, there's no upset Johnny Knoxville. Really? He's just, he's just varying degrees of super That's goofy cool. and happy, I you love know, him. but he said, and Knoxville had this mean, angry look on his face and just smacked the shit out of the camera out of his hand. And he's like, this isn't, we're not here for a fucking oh, wow. skit. This, this serious, isn't a man. joke. Wow. And like, I, I just don't feel like anyone's in a position with Kanye where they, they can do, do the that. Because the way, yeah. it's, it's really strange. And in, in one way, you, I you're love- You're dealing with mental illness and it seems to me a colossal narcissist. Correct. So, yeah. <clears throat> good luck. I could run for president? Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is, it, this is not- <sighs> it, it's, it's, it's troubling too, because I, I love the fact that we still, out of all the countries in the world, I'm not the guy who's going to sit and be like, America, number one, it's not even open to debate. But I do believe that we are, uh, it's a great argument that we still are the greatest country in the world because we really do have personal freedom. Even places like Canada, Agreed. Germany, Agreed. England, you can get, you can get action, you know, law enforcement can say something or do something for things that you say and things that you do in your own personal agree, space and time. Yeah. But, with mental illness like this, it's 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 like a really tough one because you can't you can't take an adult and just say like this fucking guy or gal is crazy. Oh, yeah. They're gonna kill themselves. They're gonna hurt someone else unless they prove that. Yeah. The, the medical community well, can't do th anything about it. Think of your Kim Kardashian. Say what you want about it, but Ooh. she's married to that. You gotta deal with that shit all the time. Not That's the father of your kids. You never know what's gonna happen. No, think about the kids. Always. The kids are like, what and the I fuck? and I don't look. I'm not. <laughs> I think it's it's silly that they're so rich and so famous, but at the same, I don't think like the Kardashians are bad people. No, and, it was, and I think that a lot of the the way the reason why people <laughs> are just right. sitting back going like, ah, oh, fucking Kanye is crazy, God. like they don't acknowledge the suffering that might be going on here because it's the Kardashians, and it's like, no, they're human beings. They're not. They're not I don't care. Like, they're just, don't, there's oh, reality. Oh, he has a billion dollars. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Me. He'd rather have. Yeah. Just a hundred dollars be mentally. I don't healthy. care what your view is or how big your house is. If you have to live inside your own head, that's no fucking joke, man. I got to know Chloe and Chris a little bit. How so? Um, I uh, was. They were screen testing me to host the X Factor. Remember when they brought the X Factor to America? Yeah. Um, I, I, they, they, I was like really, really in the running to host that show. Who ended and, up hosting it? Uh, three. Mario times. and. Mario Lopez and, um, and, and, and Chloe. <laughs> Mario got it. 
yeah, he's a he's he's a much better version of me he's as far so as much for that. Miguel. But he, but he's also not threatening. I I I fucked that one up my, on my own because How I, so did you start yelling at Chloe? No, I went to <laughs> a meet uh, the final meeting at uh, Simon Cowell's house in uh, up in the hills of Beverly Hills. Nice house. It's exactly like a bond villain's house like it's hell yeah. it's i've been to some nice places this was number one this was like are you fucking this is a joke right i'm on punked he created american idol yeah it's all it's very nondescript from the outside it looks it looks like the studio it's just like bricks and, and like like concrete and shit and you're like well what the fuck am i at the right place all of a sudden i go up to the intercom and i'm like uh my name's mike i'm here to see and, they, and this fucking wall goes it opens up and there's dudes buffing his bugatti I swear, oh, I know this sounds like, I swear to God, there's like a couple dudes washing Dude, his Bugatti and there's another like sick car in the, in the, Shit. in the uh, garage. And I'm like, oh, okay. So we walk in. The whole living room is an infinity pool Jeez. inside. Oh, wow. <laughs> and there's just like bridges and then one center island of land where what he's the on the couch sitting there chain smoking this fucking insane tv he's like dr evil yeah and the the in, the, the indoor infinity pool goes outside what? underneath like floor to ceiling glass and just drops off the hills into hollywood honestly like, doesn't have toddlers no no, have no. All that shit they did not back then i think yeah. he does have a kid now but yeah. this was 10 years ago so we're sitting down we're having and then he starts showing me some clips of the british version we're just discussing it and, and he's he was very nice and very cool and he's like you know what I want here is something different than Idol. I want a, I want someone who's who's edgy. I want someone who's unpredictable. And I go, That's you. and I go, no, you don't. <laughs> Thinking there was going to be like some recognition. Like, no, yeah. And the room said, he's like, he's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, you don't really want that. I mean, it sounds good, but you don't really want someone on live television that's unpredictable and edgy. You want probably someone who's going to be but, reading uh, the teleprompter yeah. and keeps them. And he's like, ah. Oh. Seems like you have it figured out better than I do, and I'm like, uh, uh, no, 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 I don't, I don't. And, uh, and you sure enough, see, I didn't get the, I didn't oh, get the no. uh, job. But I did do a bunch of screen tests with Chloe, and so in between <clears> the filming, we would spend, you know, we spent three or four hours at a time just sitting there shooting the shit in the green room, and like nice, she's nice lady, she's really nice and and funny and self deprecating, and you she, know, and she, how was she with the teleprompter? not good yeah but then good but neither am i and and it's, it's not it's, it's a real it's a real like that's what have you a free teleprompter look are it's, you it take you gotta get used to I've it i've done it a lot are you a harvard law graduate if you can do that no but it's a skill and like the seacrest and the carson dailies and the mario lopez and stuff a lot of practice who really do it well Nick Cannon. and make it seem like they're not reading something it's, it's a skill it's a skill, it's a skill. It's a skill. Yeah. but it's also doing it a lot yeah, yeah. it's just doing it a lot all right next one Okay, so Walmart the other day announced that starting this Thanksgiving, it's going to be the first time since the 1980s the that fuck? they have <laughs> officially closed. Why? Uh, one, they're afraid of COVID concerns. Two, In they November? want to allow their uh, workers who have been working during this pandemic to have some more family time. Oh, that's nice. They're also going to be allocating, I think, $428 million to pay the workers a bonus who have been working nice. during this pandemic that's good nice. that's what i'm great. talking about good all right next chronicle all right there you go with walmart. oh and on you monday jeff with, uh, uh, with walmart low energy huh no i can just, always no, tell. Just with walmart. Can always tell walmart Papa. takes my energy away. Oh, oh my no. god walmart takes my energy yeah. away what Jeff else, Bezos. Yeah. what yep on monday jeff bezos made 13 billion dollars <laughs> from just the just stock. stocks his stocks for some reason on monday just go, i think it raised eight percent jesus Christ. and okay. yeah he made 13 billion dollars in one day since the divorce and his wife like the second she's richest, the richest, richest i think woman. she's the she's richest, richest woman. woman but she's yeah. like she's on the top 10 i think most top rich. 10 of uh, most richest people i think most, in general but for women female. she's number one god that's the shit isn't that cool? I wish she was like Tupac or crazy. something, just like th <laughs> throwing money in places, buying buying male whores. What else you got? <laughs> God, uh, these are fan submissions. I wish I remember their names, but so this oh! is one. Oh. This is is that a gal? It's a gal. He kept tagging you, yeah. as Brian. She's fantastic. Yeah, Brian. So this is for the, Brian. The and this is, I guess her name is Julia Forey, and this is her what? Whoa, her Instagram that's, page. That's a little much for me. I'm not gonna no, lie. Is it? I think you'd have fun with it. That's a little much for me, but I do appreciate her. <laughs> She's pretty. That's just a lot. It's too much testosterone. Her face is pretty. Well, they, but when you take that much, 
human no, growth natural. hormone and testosterone. <laughs> that's all that. That is women it? commonly look like. I mean, that, that does. Holy fuck. That's just, that uh, looks. Well, not, that looks yeah, that's a little funny. bit like yeah. my chest. Go to the one. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's how, go to the one where she's in the mirror. She's got a great. She, I mean, her triceps all are. That, she would have been a very. Her triceps are crazy, man. I, but she, but some guys yeah. are into that. God, her shoulders are nuts. Yeah, some guys who are into guys. She's she's. Um, <laughs> you enjoy this? It's Let's, just too much. Is no, this no, is no, finally no. too much yeah, for you? It's too much. What's, it's too. It's that? too. Um, well, there's all. There's all. Uh, it's all hormones and testosterone and out of control shit. Well, but the, hey, Bubba, those CrossFit girls you like, same shit. That's, just less that's, tests. I know that they do a lot of. Let me let me go to the but, go to the <laughs> ass pick. When do you get test clit? That's the that's like the that's my I draw the line at test clit. Yeah. yeah, where it looks like a little I've, croissant. I've experienced that. <laughs> I've experienced it with really? large clits. Yes, I experienced did, it with a bodybuilder who was an ex bodybuilder, and she said, "I don't want to talk." About <laughs> wait, <laughs> she wait, a, I can't stop. <laughs> and a stop. bodybuilder. It was from steroids. She has a very, <clears throat> she had a very yeah. huge clit. And what would you do? <laughs> she said, "Just so you know, when, you know when I was." Did she give you a heads up? When I was touching it, and I was like, oh, "That's the biggest." <laughs> did you clip. did you fillet it? Huh? Did you? I did. Yeah. Uh, I feel sick. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> okay. so, this your is a long old, time. Your ago. old mouth and those crooked. It's a long teeth. time. I was much younger. I was in my. It's kind of tight, like actually. You're in your forties. You're in your forties. I'm, I'm no. changing my mind. I kind of like it. No, <laughs> now I wish she had left herself alone because before she yeah, did she's all pretty. this stuff, her, she you tell been, her face. She was she pretty. She was very pretty before all this. I mean, some people are into this. Oh my gosh! Doesn't it look kind of like a? No, this is gonna sound mean. But like, if Michelle Waterson were to get on crazy amounts no, of steroids, Michelle Michelle's so very beautiful. Much more I'm just saying, though. No, I'm just saying, like, no, no she, she doesn't look anything mind. like no, her. Never mind. No, never mind. Looks nothing like her. 17 inch arms. Holy mackerel. Yeah. All right, next She's one. Jack <laughs> City, son. <laughs> or, or, it was just too much. For, it was just, yeah, it's just simply okay. too much. So listen, much. if you like it, but I appreciate you bringing it to my if attention. You like it? Fire away. <clears throat> okay. I appreciate you bringing it to my attention. Just too much. Another T Fetus tagged you on Army. <laughs> I think they tagged you on this oh, one too, Brennan. Hell yeah. So it's a four by, it's like a four by four Porsche that can go off road and on road. So fucking but they're, so they're gonna work on this a specific company. Oh, James I wanna Bond, buy James that Bond just to make fuck shit up mad. Porsches? Gonna, Porsche ain't gonna work on this. They only do racing. I wonder if that though. thing is sick. I would love to watch Daniel Craig fuck people up in that. Like hell in some yeah. like Swiss mountain. <laughs> No, there's a guy who already does a Rogan handle on his podcast. He's a huge car guy, and he has a Carrera that he basically put 4x4 four four wheels on. Mm -hmm. It's sick looking. <laughs> a lot of them have 4x4, four four, right? A lot of them have all-wheel all -wheel drive. Yeah, there's all yeah, 4S. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah the all 4S, right. uh, you get the 4S Turbo. I think it's a monster. You seen the new Bronco, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> My wife wants it. My they're sold out like crazy right yeah yep. even though they're like doubling the i got a notice yesterday because there's the they call it the first edition and so it gets it, it's every option the sasquatch package of 35 inch tires everything it's the the best one you can get they they sent out a thing go you know you got selected to be the the one of 3500 get the first edition congrats i'm like okay cool two days later hey so the demand was so high we're actually making it 7500 so if you don't want the first edition you can pull out now because they they, they told us 3500 which makes it super exclusive and then they bumped it to 70 because of such a demand and those next 3500 sold out in like seconds i'm okay with that i'm, I'm just happy to see like an american truck getting that kind of dude america bus, hasn't done something know. hype like this in a long time that, that bronco is sick it's pretty awesome what else you got? All right, my buddy Joe sent this in. It's a coronavirus um, recommendations by the C the Canadian CDC, right? Use glory holes. So this is actually on their government website right here. That's fucking... Use barriers like walls, e.g. glory holes <laughs> that allow for sexual contact but prevent close face-to-face -face contact. You dumb motherfucker. It's actually on their government Eat website. Eat a dick, Canada. <laughs> Although I think glory holes are fantastic. I was going to say, I don't, I I'm, like not, glory I'm not mad at a glory hole. I don't know hole. why you're so mad. No, I've never been. But why, why, why are you mad at Canada for know. saying do a glory Fuck you. No, they say have all the sex, shit. wash your hands, but they go, hey, glory, glory hole is actually pretty good too. <laughs> yeah. Cut a I'd, hole in the I've never public. done that. I'd be, I should do that. I'd be down. Yeah. <laughs> I used to watch. Let's make one here. Use a hole. That's yeah. I, I used to watch that show, uh, Gigolos, and some girl hired all the Gigolos. She must have been balling. Then she had some dude built like a box like a square box that she got into and she had a bunch of holes then all six guys what put their dicks in the hole 
Great episode. <laughs> New season finale. <laughs> what the fuck? What Did season that finale? That was just her thing? The guy who killed that woman was in there. So that was her thing? She was just into all the dicks? Yeah. He just showed just pictures. Excitement. Just, that might have been you porn. Either way, <laughs> I think it was on Gigolo's <laughs> finale. Been. I think it was I think it was you porn. No, that was Gigolo. I promise. It could have been Hannah Montana. That's so I, wild. <laughs> getting we, into a box with a bunch of dicks. I'd like to do it with like... like and they were laughing. No, it was Gigolo's on podcast. One, one chick and five guys, and then you, you they go, and you. it's almost like dick... Glor- like Russian roulette. That's what they were doing. Basically. Yeah, the, the guys were laughing. They were laughing at each other. Yeah, you can just hope that you. Get It'd be there. fun with your buddies. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't know. What else you got? <laughs> Stick your dick in there. All right, this is the last one. This is a, a mother trying to fetch her wallet from a crocodile pit or gator pit. Oh Fuck come on! That. And her kids, like at least one of her sons, followed her in. This is pretty crazy. Got to be how, careful how, now. How He's a kid. little kid. You'll see him in, in the video. Fuck, here. dude. Oh, he's probably Aww. eight, seven. You got to keep little children away from a fucking gator, dumb so, She drops her wallet in there. Yeah. And the gators aren't huge or anything, but that's her. She's Oh, that one grabbed it? Yeah, so this girl right here. That's the mother that dropped her wallet. And she's on the phone. Yeah. And the kid's there. Kid's in there. What could possibly be in there that's so important? The problem is if it's a big gator, you're in trouble. So now kid's walking around. Get that fucking kid out of here. Oh my god. Very true. Mm-hmm. Compelling argument. Yeah. <laughs> and they're definitely big enough to tear you up, you know. That kid's like kid. little Don, Donald Cerrone. Well, they're they're ambush predators, so. There's a bunch of them. That's they're so, small though. That's so disappointing. They're babies. So her wallet's right there. You can see the pink. So she's oh, yeah. she's tossing rocks yeah, in. Small. She's tossing rocks in to like, you know, get their small attention. Small for that kid, man. Look at that one creeping up, dude. Yeah. Oh, they they think she's going to feed him. That's, that's also how they feed him, yeah. yeah. Why don't they just throw like a chicken breast way far away and then? That's a good point. Get there were like no other officials there either. No park officials. Right. So she grabs it. Oh she shit! Needed her wallet. Well, where's the kid at, man? How much cash would have probably. to be in your wallet right for there. you to do that? I mean, if Kids they're big in. and if they're crocodiles, there's no money. But alligators that big probably not. No, gonna I'm not doing any of it. Fuck my wallet, dude. I just can't think of anything unless it's cash. That why wouldn't you just? If it I mean, was it's a, a check, hassle, have them rewrite the check. Have, have your credit cards replaced. Like, if it's saltwater crocodiles, obviously get the. No, fuck. I'm not doing any of it, especially my fucking kid. Yeah, but for her to have her kid in there, that's the biggest problem. So they're trying to press charges. They're trying to find out who she is. Well, she's a moron. Yeah. yeah. So that was she's it. Just a moron. Brainerd, Minnesota. What could you do? Little fucker. Minnesota, huh? Yeah. Minnesota. A lot of Minnesota. Is that it? That's it. Mike Catherwood. Yes. You're a good man, as usual. We love you, dude. Thanks Thank for coming you. back in, man. Thank you always for having always me. Always good to have you here. Jim? Mikey likes you, guys. Mikey likes you. The greatest health and fitness podcast, maybe. Oh, yes. oh. Top, top 100. Mikey 000, likes you. For sure. I thought you were saying Mikey likes you. Mikey like likes you. Okay. I Watch. You this. Chin's, but Mikey likes Chin's you. Chin's feeling 100. percent You're negative. Thank God. Chin yes. got his negative test back. Chin, everyone. Pickle Rick. Pickle Rick. Is that it? Mike, we love you. This is the final kid. We're out. Boom!